Okay, let's bring the meeting to order. Is there any uh, changes or adjustments to the agenda as presented? Additions? I have a few things. Okay. And I wrote them down right here. <laughs> um, I was wondering if we could get, I don't see Brian Krause here, but an uh, update on the mine road uh, right away infringement. Um, just an update on if there is one. I just want to keep it on the agenda. The um, joint employee issue that we have with the going with the village right now, and um, some thoughts I have. A third item is keeping track of open issues and prioritization. Okay. Any other additions? Or I just want to bring up and about the uh, LCPC broadband grant. And see that we're participating in that. Okay. And I wanted to um, uh, discuss funding and placement for the inclusivity sign. Do you have anything, Brian? No, I think I can. If there's no others, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for July 15th and August 5th? So moved. So motion, we have a second. Lacking a motion, or lacking a second, the motion will die. I think we should move into the next meeting. I wasn't here for one of the meetings. So the board's not prepared to approve in this meeting? I'll withdraw the motion. Okay, we'll come back to it next meeting. Rosemary? Okay, you got the end of the year at the status report, and now with the cash on hand. And I say we have a committed balance of $113,000. Are we ready to close it out yet? Or? Okay. Unless you want to wait another month so you can review this some more, I don't know. Okay. So how much was uncommitted? $113,390. Well, say my only concern with this is that's a lot higher than we estimated. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you want to take a month to go through the figures and come back with a recommendation where to put, where to put it? Yeah. Okay. I, I certainly wouldn't say no to a little bit more time to try and okay. track it down because I, everybody was pinching pennies, but that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's the right direction. <coughs> yeah. And I gave you a list of current delinquent taxpayers. Um, First installment of taxes was due last month, <coughs> and to date we're at 35% total collected for the year. Thank you. <coughs> right up the same as last year, and 2017-18 is the year that the tax bills went up a month later. Uh -huh. And today I received the. Uh, Collectors for the tax sale of collectors' deeds, which I haven't signed yet for Blackbird Properties and Kirby Goss trailer, which I'll probably sign tomorrow. And I've got two errors and omissions for the grand list for this year. One was um, Robert and Betty Sweetser, they were not on the village grand list. And we had a Linda Swan. Um, they missed her trailer in one of Harvey's mobile home parks. It was a new trailer that came into the park last fall. And that needs the board signatures to change the grand list. Oh, we need a motion first. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, motion to do we approve? Is that the language yes. you need? Approve the errors and omissions, omissions noted here. Motion to move second. Second. Any discussion? Does the motion need to have any details about what the errors and omissions were? The air we can came on probably get you a copy of this. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did they, how did they <coughs> miss switches place? I don't <laughs> know. pretty weird. Why that, how that got changed or somehow the box for the village got unchecked. Huh. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? And I have a catering permit for Wood Valley Pizza for the um, housing, rural housing partnerships fundraising. On um, September 7th from 5 to 7:30. This is identical to what we did last, what they did last year, and I think we just asked them to notify the sheriff that they're having the event. They have this. Because then, do you approve their noise waiver thing last time? Did they have a noise waiver request? No, not this time. Uh, we did approve their uh, facility use and noise waiver last time. I move to approve. Any conditions? <coughs> nope. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second that. Motion and second. second. Any discussion? Uh, yes. Oh. I just have to sign it. Just one board approval before I And I have a request for a tax abatement hearing from Jane Draper. She purchased the old diabetes clinic building. So I don't know if you want to set a date for that. Okay. Uh, we have a fine on it. preference from the board uh, can we do it with one of our next meetings could uh, okay that'll be a topic for later we, we can okay. come back. I'm not gonna be at that next one oh. on the first Monday or well, Tuesday. It's Labor Day so we're yeah I'm not gonna be here yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that uh, whether we want to have it on Labor Day or reschedule it okay so BCA meeting <coughs> Anything else? That's it. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> do you have anything for Brian's report? Or? Um, not too much of that isn't covered uh, when we get into the. Uh, we've got a couple road items in my report. Okay. For Brian's report, um, the road crew, everything's going pretty well. Uh, we've got uh, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, we submitted our reimbursements and everything uh, and I believe we started in on the current year um, grant and aid project. So. Okay. Uh, is there any planning commission report? I don't see any planning commission members other than Charlie. I have a question. No, you're supposed yeah. to give a report. I don't have a report. I'm not an officer of the planning commission. So we've been looking at class four roads. Originally, it was stated that we were looking at class three and four. Would it? But so is that true? We're to look at three and four, or just four? I understood just four, but... I, I think originally we were talking about three and four, but when it came down to asking the Planning Commission, we decided four, and my understanding was that we would receive the report on class four roads, and then 
we might have more questions about class three road, but we would start with a report on class four. Daryl? So I have a question sort of pertaining to the planning commission report here. Is there a way to get a copy of the map that you reference, that the planning commission references in their minutes? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You can ask AOT for one. That's the map. I did that years ago. I got a copy from AOT. So I can find the AOT map. All, all, the, the, numbers, maps, all the numbers that were referred to on that are from the AOT map. So there are changes listed in the July, the minutes of the July Planning Commission meeting? <coughs> yes. How do I? tie the changes listed here to a map. I'd like to look at a map and see what the changes that are being suggested it's, it's are. It's the AOT map of the roads in Johnson. Is what I, have, I have a copy that I got years ago, and that's what we're using. I think it's available online. I, the AOT's map is. I think what Daryl's looking for is more or less the, the final report of what changes are, are you recommending with you know, the final report on class four roads. Yeah, I mean, um, essentially that's... We have an issue with the final report, but I can tell you that we're not inclined to abandon any, any rights of way. There's talk about taking the class four roads to the last dwelling, which hasn't been defined. And beyond that, it would become a trail. But you're not abandoning any rights of way. So the other question I would have is I can't find a definition of what a trail consists of, what that means to a landowner. If, if it goes from a class four road to a legal trail, what does that actually mean? It's hard to find a definition for that. Yeah. And I would just, I think that needs to be defined and thought out and spelled out before the select board makes a decision on actually reclassifying any roads. Because that could have a very big impact to property owners and who ultimately is responsible for maintaining this newly defined trail or an existing class four road. Trip. Doug, maybe you can help, but. Well, I, I, I thought we were still waiting for the report, and we asked for yeah. it because the, it has, it's so significant for the town citizens, and the landowners, and uh, future development that uh, there, there are some peculiar, there are new pressures on in terms of town expenditures coming up for roads. So we thought it was time to look at something that was. Uh, and the planning commission seemed like they were the ideal one because they were concerned about the future. And so we're just waiting and for their report and then it will come into our bailiwick. I thought that the town had a map downstairs of, of fourth class roads. We have a, there's a, there's a map downstairs, I've seen it, that, that lists all the roads, you know, and shows, you know, you should be able to, you know, is that something that, that could be copied for, for yeah, Daryl? That's the AOT map. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, you've evidently been reading their, their minutes, but it hasn't gotten to us in the policy. You know, we wanted input from them, and then yeah, so, we'll... So I'm not opposed to looking at it, Doug. I do think there are certain ones that, you know, legitimately could be thrown up completely or reclassified. That's why I was trying to get a copy of the map so I could see specifically which, what might be up for discussion for specific roads. Mm -hmm. um, and I am happy to come to the next planning commission meeting. I apparently there wasn't one this past month. So the, the definition of trail is comes out of state statute. Fourth class road comes out of state statute. So the town has no no obligation with regard to fourth class roads except what might be being put on us now. So through. Uh, you know, pressures arising. Right. Um, I understand. No, your, I understand everything you're saying, Doug. I've done a lot of reading, and I can't find a clear definition of what a what a trail would mean, what it would mean to the town, and what it would mean to to a landowner. And I think that's an important piece when you're trying to decide if something should be reclassified or not. Very basically, a town trail 
there is no uh, requirements on the town to maintain in any, any fashion. Right. Uh, there are some statutory requirements on class four highways. Right. If there's a bridge, culvert, et cetera, we have to maintain it. Yeah, that's, so, our, that's our understanding is that if it stays a class four road, the town is obligated to maintain bridges and culverts, right. but not to maintain the traveled surface. Right. right. So if, sorry, no, I just want to continue this thought. So if something gets reclassified to a trail, the town has no more responsibility for maintenance, so are they also forfeiting authority? Can no. I put a gate up? No. Can I block no. it? No, we would so retain our right of way. But you maintain your right of way, but what's the right of way for? Foot traffic? Vehicle traffic? I mean, if you're saying there's a right of way for vehicle traffic, then you're saying there's a common benefit to the community, to the general public. So that's where I'd like to see what some of these specifics are, because then I would argue if the town says there's a benefit to the general public to be able to drive up this right of way, then I don't think it's appropriate to reclassify it as a trail. Those are the kind of things that I think need to be thought of. And I think the, the board would probably take a case by case uh, look at each highway. And if there's any camps, dwellings, et cetera, use of a class four highway, we probably would leave it as class four highway. If it's, there are some class four highways that Virtually, you can't even see where the road is anymore. Those would make sense to convert them to trail. And I would, I would agree 100%. That's, that's all why I was asking but if I could try to figure out which one going to be effective. The public maintains a right of way, so you can't gate a trail. So I would then be responsible for maintaining a road for the general no. public to use. No, no, you don't have to do anything. If I want to access my property, you do. But you, yeah. I have a question. Sure. Um, in our um, county uh, transportation planner, it happens to be sitting right behind you. Mm -hmm. Is there an actual state definition of what a town trail is in this context? Yes, I, uh, there it is. And I so, have it in my hand. Would you like me to read it? No, I, I don't. It's but it, that was the first question that Daryl asked Charles. And so, if there is one, as this, as you're forming this as a, a, a commission, planning commission. That needs to be known, and as you make your recommendation to us, in order to change things to trails, that has to be also conveyed to us. We need to know what it is before we start doing. That's the point you're trying to make, I think. That's exactly the point. So I, I mean, I would be happy to, you know, go to planning commission meeting. I apologize because I missed the first two times it was discussed. Like I said, I did done this past month, but there wasn't a meeting. Um, you know, discuss it with them first. Yeah, for yeah it makes sense, sense. Just, but it's a good question. Daryl, you know the main driver behind this whole thing, right? Yes, the water runoff. Right. Rules. We're trying to save the town money. Well, and, uh, but the town still has responsibility. If the rules change, there's some responsibility that needs to be had if it's deemed that this is in the interest of the people of the town. Well, that's right. We're still in the very beginning stages of trying to iron this out. And uh, I'm sure that we're going to be taking your concerns into consideration. The approach of the select board previously was there's no way this is a essentially a sacred right for the future of the town. Now there's something else that might be counterweight to that and, and we're just going to assess that because uh, That's very the, the importance of it beforehand hasn't changed. And did you have a well, to answer the question um, on the regional transportation planner, it's nice to meet you. Uh, there is definitions for all these different uses, and it comes down to Title 19, which is probably where you found the legal trail definition, and the newer uh, Lake Champlain Act 64 laws that have imposed water quality rules on class four roads that have nothing to do with the traveling public having access to that road. So the state has created a potentially a conundrum for towns and select boards to pick through the details and identify which statute carries the legal weight in which situations and in their power and flexibility within the municipality what they have the ability to do for the best of their residents. 
and we are at the very beginning stage of this, and I have an agenda item coming up shortly. I believe. Also, that? yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do have one other comment for the board for the planning commission. Uh, the, the board had has also expressed an interest in having the planning commission take a look at um, future sewer hookups mm -hmm. and allocation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a letter drafted to that effect that once we receive the final report for the class four roads, we'll okay. you know, be able to give them their marching orders mm -hmm. for the next topic. Cool. You got a heads up on it. Oh, no, we can do it. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Yeah. I thought it was sewer and water. I get a sewer and water. <laughs> Anything else? If not, thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. Uh, rec coordinator report, is there anything there? Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's my first shoe week, so I have to show up and do it at post. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I brought a report and I also came seeking permission for an event. So um, the report, let's see, I've been there under a month still. Um, but we have done some improvements down at Old Mill Park. There were a couple boards broken in the bridge, um, got those replaced, hung the boat tarp back up, put up some signs, and got gate locks for the new gates that are in. Um, met with everyone over at JAS and trying to learn their systems. Um, we have 85 participants for soccer, seven coaches, and the rosters are all made. And Everybody is getting started on that. It starts the first week of school. Um, we're working with the Sports Engine Program, which is an online rostering tool, and so there's a learning group on that. Um, but we've been doing conference calls with them and figuring it out. The skate park, um, we had the clinic for the new bike track over there, and we had 30 plus attendants at it, and that's, I guess, a pretty big number for them, so that was exciting, and Casey's fired up. Um, Sunday, November 3rd, we would like permission to hold a 5K at Old Mill Park using the route that used to be, was formerly the um, Memorial Day Fun Run, which is around the Old Mill Park course, and then it crosses Lindway Lane, and then it goes onto the rail trail, where it will cross Lindway Lane two other times as it heads down. And um, the rail trail gave us a permit for it, pending uh, you guys giving permissions for you to use. Um, gymnastics, we're seeking an instructor. Anyone? <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> so we have a lot of cool gymnastics equipment and we need someone to teach, so keep your ears out for that. And um, went through all the grant stuff, so we're figuring out what needs to be done with the current grants that we have. And then we went through the future grants, reviewed them, and prioritized them by date and project. So we'll apply for them as they're appropriate to what we're doing. Um, rec storage building, we've been in there. And it's not as bad as Nat thought it was, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's crowded. It's crowded. It's crowded. It is crowded. Yeah, it just needs to be re reorganized. Um, and then I met up with NVU and the SHAPE facility. Okay. Um, and I'm waiting to meet with the Shred Club and their internship office. Still, but shape you guys is struggling so if any of you want to go spend some money up there they need it <laughs> go join the gym program we're gonna try and get some lessons and stuff going a little bit you're saying we need to be <laughs> no, that, that'll come in my last thing <laughs> um, I had a social media class with Kyle News and um, we now have Facebook up and running again. We have Instagram and Front Porch Forum all going okay, to a rec because one of the good. biggest complaints is how do you get information. So we're going to try and get information out there. Um, there is a conference in October for the Vermont Parks and Recreation Department and I applied for a scholarship. So if I get that, I'll try and attend that. Um, met with Jess Bickford from Healthy Lamoille Valley and she's full of ideas and has some funding and stuff. So we're going to try and partner up with them for things. And um, sat in on the conversation with the um, Conservation Commission and Walter and you know, all the exciting stuff about hiking and mountain biking. Um, but if we get granted permission to hold a 5K, we're going to put that together with the nine-week couch to 5K program. So 
getting teams together for DAES, the town offices, maybe a fire department team. We're going to hold uh, once a week coaching sessions down at Old Get right Park now, won't you? over the course of the nine weeks and then hold the race at the end of it. So, cool. Mr. Davis, the gym teacher of the schools, committed a team and he was rallying people up as I was there this morning. They looked really excited. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're working on the folks downstairs. We'll see how it goes. So, but yeah, it's fun. I like it. Thanks for hiring me. I'm enjoying it. So. Well, welcome aboard. Thanks. What's Boar's pleasure on the 5K run request? So moved. We've got motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, first request for proof. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the registration fee for that conference you're talking about? Do you know? I don't know off the top okay. of my head. I have it downstairs. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions? Do you know when the registration deadline is for the rec conference? No, she said um, until they go through their um, scholarship applications, not to worry that she had me in a queue and I would get the early registration fee if I wasn't granted okay. the difference thereof if I wasn't granted full scholarship. But the board should be able to meet again before your deadline. I would think so. Well, when you meet again. Yeah, because it's October. Yeah. It's in the middle of October. That's what I thought. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Unless it's huge. I mean, if you don't get the scholarship, then uh, I think we should look at it to see whether we can cover it. Yeah, it's like $200 or something. A little more than I thought it would be, but yeah, you yeah. should look at it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Bravo. Okay, moving along. Uh, a little early, but is Charlie planning to be here? I haven't heard. Okay, so if he walks in, I wouldn't recognize him, so I'd neither come back to it. Uh, we have quite a few people here. Is there some things that we can jump ahead in your report that would I people think are probably in? most people are here for the hiking and biking. Okay, trails. that's the first item. And that's Walter's proposal, right? I mean, the social media that went out said 750, so I don't know if you want to wait till 750. Okay. Uh, or yeah, I think more people are going to come in. Okay, yeah. we can come back to that. So let's, uh, we can take care of the uh, road issues. Uh, we'll let Rob go home a little earlier. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, the first item is in your packets, uh, says at the top, agreement for local project manager services. So as we've been talking about the uh, municipal road general permit and its requirements on us, one of them is that we have to have regular uh, inventories of our uh, stat states of our erosion issues. Uh, you know, what, what do we have out there? What are some of the problem areas and what needs to be addressed? Uh, so that we can make good decisions about timelines. Um, our existing report is, it would be out of date for the current rules, uh, but it fit under the old rules. So they were willing to grandfather us in under the start of the program, but we have to conduct an inventory uh, kind of as soon as possible. To that end, uh, LCPC is, has applied for and received a grant to conduct an inventory for us. Uh, we will be providing the matching funds for the grant. Um, hopefully we'll be able to work some, at least some of that in through in-kind, but we might end up paying a little bit of cash for this. Um, and, and Brian, that's really the worst case. I, yeah. <coughs> and, and, you know, all the other towns have worked with um, meeting two to three times with the select board if they're very engaged and interested. I can meet a fourth time with them, so your volunteer time counts towards the match, as well as every time I meet with Brian or Brian Krause uh, in the field driving around looking at the sites would also go towards the match. 
and that would um, then be a, a, a letter of testimony, so to speak, at the end of the project. Yeah. Yeah, I, I expect that we'd be able to make it up through match contribution, but we should be prepared that there might be a cash contribution. Uh, but it, it's not likely to be too much we can afford it. Uh, this will be a decent amount of staff time on LCPC's behalf, going around, doing site visits. Uh, we got a lot of good photography work. Uh, of sites out of the last report and a couple uh, pre-planning uh, for some of the most severe projects uh, that we were able to use and implement on and save our staff time, save Brian's time uh, for the project. So we need to do this and this is kind of the, the best opportunity for it to get done. The cheapest way out though. Yeah. Yeah, it's not likely to cost us anything other than time. So what are you looking for? Uh, authorization from the board and then the signature? Signature from whoever the board wants to designate to sign. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? So I'm hoping to designate the chair to sign on behalf of the board. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. okay. Uh, the next item is a little bit less directly related to LCPC, but I wanted to cover this while Rob was here, because uh, Rob and I did a little bit of work on this together. Uh, if you recall earlier this summer we had the we were informed about the update coming for the town road and bridge standards uh, that these were going to that the new standards were going to be coming through and for the most part they are just bringing this up to speed with the requirements that are in the municipal road general permit um, they can be applied all right, so they have to be applied to hydrologically, hydrologically connected road segments. They can be applied to all road segments in the town, but the recommendation is that we don't apply them to all road segments in the town. Um, the, we're going to have a little bit of... There's a couple of different ways that we can go about uh, Kind of my recommendation for this is that we adopt the road and bridge standards. And I have a uh, second page in here is from VLCT, uh, which on the second pa first paragraph of the second page, uh, they detail that to be eligible for the funding on ERAF that we will have to um, adopt yes for hydro hydrologically connected road segments, that's sections one and two. Uh, yes for section three, and then we can mark no for the other segments. So basically we're saying no for hydrolog for non-hydrologically connected segments, uh, and no for any other segments that aren't affected by the municipal road general permit. We can use our existing standards to cover the non-hydrologically connected segments. Uh, and I do recommend that we specifically state that our non-connected segments are covered by our existing road and bridge standards. They were found to be acceptable before. They are not actually set to expire until 2021, uh, but with the adoption of the municipal road general permit that brought a conflict into the existing standards and the uh, new road requirements by the uh, MRGP. So this is how the state's kind of resolving those two. Um, I feel that the existing, that these standards, the new standards that we 
are being presented with now are overkill for non-connected segments. Uh, they would require us to do quite a bit of additional work that wouldn't see any benefit for segments that don't see a lot of water. Um, but if we don't also adopt the, the readopt the existing standards, I think that leaves us with a gap when it comes to asking for reimbursements on non-connected segments. I know that's a whole lot to throw at you, but. This is Brian, I would only add that that's usually achieved, and I think they might recommend it in the new template uh, to attach your other standards to this new document. Yes. So it, it, it's incorporated by that mechanism. <clears throat> Uh, and this is all submitted electronically, so there's no actual signature for anything as far as I know. And this would uh, directly affect our FEMA reimbursement? Yes. Uh, this is 10% of 10% of the total. Uh, right. There's several categories of um, this ERAF, which is a state assistance fund. When there's a FEMA disaster, FEMA pays 75%. And then in most states, the other 25% is up to the locals. Vermont created this incentive program to get towns. Uh, the state provides some share of that 25%. And there's several tiers of participating in that. If I remember correctly, Johnson is uh, generally a robust participant, meaning uh, you, you, you've felt flooding before and you know what it means to get FEMA's assistance, therefore you go the extra step to, to get that state leverage as well. Um, apologize if I'm off base no, there. No, we, we have. Yeah, uh, so whatever that category is, and I believe there's four, four different parameters that you have to meet and then you have a fifth bonus one. Yeah. Um, so out of that, I'm not sure exactly where you fall, um, but whatever it was before, I guess I'm going to apologize, a long story, wherever you were before uh, it is, is, uh, is what you would get again. You would maintain that current share of the ERAF assistance. What's the board's pleasure? Uh, I'll make a motion that we um, Approve and adopt sections one, two, and three of the town road and bridge standards, which are dated June 5, 2019. Um, that we use our existing standards for all other sections, which are for non hydrologically connected areas of the town highways. Uh, and that should we be able to, we attach our current standards for the town's edification, excuse me, the state's edification. You're really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> We have a motion. I'll second that. Were you paying enough attention? <laughs> you got that done? <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, and this will be electronically submitted. It's, it's electronically submitted. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a space for your names, but it's not signature that's part of the electronic document okay. that we submit. No discussion. All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. And the last piece with uh, Rob is our, we have a really interesting opportunity uh, working with uh, UVM to study the uh, efficacy and efficiency of these requirements and th these projects that they're paying for and re requiring us to do on water quality and the impact of, of public road work and improvements on water quality. Um, we have questioned before, uh, I know I've questioned it quite a bit, about uh, how efficient this, 
how efficient it is for them to go after and spend so much money and time working on roads and how that impacts water quality uh, when we there might be more efficient ways to spend our money. We might be able to invest the same amount of money in another area and receive a greater impact. What we've got right now is an opportunity to have that studied so that we can have some data behind it. You know, that the, the state, uh, state has one opinion. Privately, we, we have other ideas about this. We get some data this way, knowing, finding out, knowing for sure you know, what's the best way to spend our money. Uh, the request would allow a group of researchers from UVM to come and do some uh, pre-qualification testing on a site where we're going to be doing work. I believe they do some monitoring while we're doing the work. And then they'll come back and do testing after the improvements are made. Uh, I. Rob suggested a site that he thinks would work out pretty well for us. It doesn't look, it's not terribly easy to read in black and white, but you've got a picture of it. It's on River Road East, uh, a little bit east of uh, Waterman Road. Um, we think this is a pretty good site for what the UVM wants to observe, and this is a site that's going to be pretty effective for us for our own interest in maintaining our roads. Um, Brian hasn't written the project in total yet, uh, but this, a part of this project will cover what UVM wants to study. It is likely that we might do a little bit more than what UVM study parameters are, but that's not going to affect their, their study. Um, so the request right now is just to agree in principle to granting them access. I think that's all you need for right now. It doesn't cost us a cent either. Well, it's a pro it's a project we'd be doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that, the nuance there, to, to your point, is how I how yeah I, I, what I expressed to UVM was that we don't. It might be difficult for the towns to select a project site just to participate in the study when they already have a long list of to-dos around town. And if none of those to-do items fit what UVM wants, you're basically asking the town to go out of their way, set something important aside, and do this for you. Um, so UVM is under very understanding at that point, and they want to try to find a spot that the town intends to work on anyway. Um, but they're at this point in the research project, they're, they're brainstorming possibilities. So they're really coming up with a long, long laundry list of possibilities. They'll go back and whittle that down, and this site may or may not actually end up being what's in the study. Um, they, something else in town might pick their eye, uh, catch their eye, um, and, um, and, 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 and the town may decide to do a project um, in the coming grant cycle that just coincidentally fits what UVM wants, and that would really be ideal mm -hmm. from where I sit. So there's no pressure and no commitment that UVM must do it. There's no signature, no vote required or anything like that. It's more of a, a consent that you'd be okay with them poking around, finding a spot, and working with Brian and Brian, uh, identifying that final location, and, um, and carrying out the research if it happens to fit the parameters they're looking for. That site is is a good example, uh, but again, I, I can't guarantee that it actually will end up in the study at this point. Yeah. We'll have to go through the regular grant process and everything else on our end also. Mm -hmm. So it's... So it doesn't sound like a downside. No. Uh, we'll, we will have some additional people on our work site. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, our crew has a good safety record. Uh, and I, I'm pretty confident of, you know, about having <coughs> observers on our, our job site that our, our crew can, mm -hmm. can manage. But it is going to be 
it is likely to end up with a couple of servers on a, on a work site. So how is it going to be decided what location? It, they, may, they may do it in another town? They are um, they're looking at um, study locations in <coughs> Chittenden County, Washington County, and the Walnut County. They're also speaking with three different B-Trans districts. So they're going to come up with probably a list of over 100 potential sites, and then probably whittle that down to about 20 that actually get studied in that study group. It is a true scientific study, so there will be a control, several control subjects, as well as the actual test subjects, and um, that's the, all up to the researchers to manage that piece. I happen to be on the advisory committee for the UVM research team with the trans staff, um, which is why I have the opportunity to offer this opportunity to you. But you can say no, and no feelings will be hurt or anything like that. Um, the, the, the UVM folks will collect their data one way or another, and at some point in the future, they will produce a report that will benefit Johnson and all the Memorial Towns um, based on the findings of that study, and whether you participate or not. So if we just tell them we'd be happy to discuss this further, we're inclined to participate, is, is that sufficient? That is sufficient. Yeah, so, so this particular section, you know, you can say, oh, there's the McEwen Island. Um, it, it, it's, you know, is not, per, you know, is an example. But you know, if we have a project we're going to proceed with in in due course, just normally, we'd be happy. What we should be telling them is, we'd be happy to discuss this with further, and we would like to. We are favorably disposed. Yes, and put myself out on them then, at the risk of uh, going outside, outside of bounds, I have already had some preliminary conversations along those lines with the UVM folks, not specifically about Johnson, but in general, of if we find out what the projects that they want to do, and then I can show those to you, and then you, the researchers, can figure out if that fits your parameters. Um, and so they, they were happy, absolutely, they were happy about that. The one caveat they put back in our court, which I don't believe is the case with Johnson, is they said we just wouldn't want them to brush out and do the work this fall. They have to do some preliminary research. They actually want you to wait and not fix it in 2019, and then go and fix it in 2020. So uh, there's a minor uh, example of a nuance with that. Was this particular project planned for 2020? Uh, we were in early stages for 2020 planning. We don't have uh, the particular projects selected that we're going to apply for in 2020 yet. Okay. Uh, when I, I did, uh, Rob had talked to me before Brian Crowley uh, left for vacation, so I was able to run this by Brian, and it sounds like this could fit. This is identified in our older erosion inventory as a high priority item, and it is one of the highest priority areas that we haven't gotten to. Brian says that there's a couple culverts in the area that he'd like to get at. Um, so this seems like a pretty good candidate uh, for a project. It doesn't affect too many users, but it is, you know, definitely a site in need of attention. We don't have to approve the site or select the we site. Don't. This is here's what we're doing, and anything fit UVM, and we're favorably disposed if it does. Yes. So we need anything full? I don't think so. Just the no. No, UVM did not request any formal. Okay. Is there a general <laughs> consensus of the board? <laughs> No, no Meeting over. Uh, Nat and Carl, basic consensus? Yes. Okay. I guess, yeah. We'd be going to Toronto, really. Okay. That, that location popped out in a, you know, our preliminary investigations, um, you know, trying to just stay ahead of the ball, that caught our eye. Um, but knowing Brian Krause, I've worked with him for a little bit now, that he's been in his position for a little while. And, uh, I, I'm confident that I can say, I'm sure he has multiple projects in mind 
that he would like to do in the near future, and this might be one of them. Um, so we'll, uh, if it sounds like it's okay with you, I'll just continue yep. to work with Brian and Brian and uh, let, let uh, you be able to know that it's okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't we That's loop, it. loop back around to the proposed hiking and biking trails. It's 750. All right. So uh, first, I want to uh, thank Walter for making us Reminding us of that the social media had said 750, that uh, we had several more people show up, and I'm really glad that uh, we didn't, that we have time for everybody and everyone has shown up. Um, so th this, I'm just going to kind of introduce it and then hand it over to, to you, Walter, but the, the idea of Recreation trails in this area has been tossed around a lot. Um, you know, it's been something that I've mentioned I'd like to see a number of times, and we've been really looking for kind of people to spearhead this. And, uh, you know, we have this is obviously predates me. We've got uh, a report back from 2012 about uh, how we might construct trails in that area. And Walter's come forward to volunteer about kind of leading the project with the support of conservation and uh, the recreation. So, Walter? Me? Thank you for giving me this moment. Um, I guess what I'm just looking for from you tonight, and which ultimately I'm going to have to go to the trustees because you are co owners with the trustee, with the village in terms of what is known as either the talc mill property or the Tatro property, it's kind of called both, is ultimately before a lot of people spend a lot of hours and volunteer time, I want to make sure that to right now that the board is somewhat behind possibly going forward with these projects, and that at one point the select board did ask the voters to sell this land, and I don't know what your intentions are now, if you need money for an industrial park or something of that nature. So ultimately, I, before a lot of volunteer hours get put into this, I'd like to get some reasonable commitment. I understand things can change, boards can change, etc. But at least I'm looking for some sort of preliminary commitment tonight. Um, there's still a lot of legwork that has to be done, a lot of boards and a lot of people need to be talked to, okay? but. I just said, okay, I, it's amazing some of the reports that we've done in the years that have just been sitting on shelves. And some of them are very good reports. They might have not been good at the time they were written, but they're good now or can be good in the future. And so I dug out a few of them because this is just something I have an interest in. And one of the handouts I gave you guys earlier just kind of walks you through the timeline Currently, the municipal development plan that has been adopted by the town, under your, one of your policies in the recreation section says, encourage efforts to revisit and or implement recommendations of the 2005 little plan, recreation facilities plan. Flip to the second page, here's a excerpt from that 2005 recreation facilities plan. And if you read there where I've highlighted for you, it says, given Johnson's unique location, riverfront assets, and the availability of certain lands, the town should use the opportunity of the recent acquisitions of the former Tatro land and River Park, along with the development of the Moyle Valley Rail Trail to envision a multiple function recreation campus developed in conjunction with the Old Mill Park. So these are two plans that have, that have been adopted by the town. In 2007, the Conservation Commission actually did a natural resources management report. And as one of the recommendations or conclusions in this report, which is the third page that I just handed to you, it's 
under the Recreation Education Public Access, it states the Talc Mill Forest provides a wonderful opportunity to engage Johnson residents in positive outdoor recreational and educational experiences. The combination of current and potential multiple use trails, forest types, and cultural history speaks in favor of developing strategies to promote these opportunities. And ultimately, then what you got in your board package, the Conservation Commission did the Talc Mill Recreation Proposal, which actually had UVM come out and scope out some possible trails on the property. I believe, uh, seeing what you have in front of you, all you have is a black and white version of all the color versions. And the, so it may be a little difficult. It lays out a whole lot of possible trails for hiking, biking, but really the only trail that exists right now there is the Bass Trail. And that's kind of it's the one that runs right up to the middle of the property. So right now there's a really only one trail on that property that exists. That's the Bass Trail. None of the others exist. This was all conceptual. So I've been out just kind of walking around the property and scoping it out and whatnot. And this is actually a very good plan. I see places where you'd want to change it, improve it, um, et cetera, at that standpoint. But ultimately, I look at it as a very good plan. So ultimately, this project I can see in conjunction and cooperation of the Conservation Commission, the Recreation Committee, the Historical Society, um, one of those little pictures I just get passed out to you, you can see the old mill. I have found remains of that, one of the old buildings up on the hill. Um, so I think a possibility is, you know, signage and tying in some historical society and education purposes that you can tie that into this. Um, I believe the tree board will probably be involved. There's certainly ash trees up there. Um, I can imagine bringing in possibly the library. It'd be great if the kids could do an interactive, you know, nature hike of some sort and displays. Um, definitely have to sit down and talk to the vast and the Sterling Snow Riders and about their trail. Um, definitely want to talk to Johnson Works about, you know, the economic developments, etc. But ultimately, even the, the most recent report that the village did in terms of their um, uh, brownfield study, they also identified that area as a potential growth area for economic development and a growth potential and for the, the town and village of Johnson. And so I just said, okay, this looks, you know, for my next act here as a community, this looks like something I want to jump on and take hold of. So I met with the planning, I mean, not the planning commission, with the um, conservation commission. Uh, the meeting was last week of the 8th and I kind of laid this out to them, and they did make a motion at their meeting. Um, their motion that they passed was a tentative approval to move forward with exploration into a trail system with further review and approval of any conceptual plan to be done by the Conservation Commission. At the same time that I was kind of starting to move forward with the Conservation Commission, the Recreation Committee has been somewhat reinvigorated and I've attended their meetings and so I've kind of kept them in the loop as well of what's going on and they're kind of latching onto this and this is a great idea and a great potential as part of the Old Mill Park Complex. Again, we've got a long ways to go, but right now I'm asking the select board, are you somewhat behind this project or I, obviously, I'm not asking for firm commitments, but at least I want to say before, a lot of people start spending time. Is, is this something you can get behind? I am. <laughs> okay. He asked more. <laughs> I said I was the first one to say that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would just add, if you've ever been down to Rutland, they have very similar uh, uh, land like Mount or Hill and uh, very similar uh, concept or they have what you're conceptually here and they have walking trails that intertwine with steep bike trails for the, the younger folks and the older folks take the easy route but they all intertwine and it's I, I don't have any idea what it costs but uh, it's certainly uh, you know there's a lot of people down there using it. I'm sure the same thing would be here. 
conceptually, yes, I would agree with it. Mm -hmm. Support it. Go forth and build. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think we have any particular plans. Uh, when the property was purchased, uh, the voters made the town and village commit to carving out what we needed and coming back so that they could sell the property that we they committed we had to commit to that before they would authorize us buying the Tato property and then when we did that we went back to our voters and absolutely not you can't sell it <laughs> we need to keep it so uh, right now there is no plans on what to do we, we've been looking for something because the voters don't want us to sell it okay there's been a discussion with the River Conservancy about uh, putting a fishing access in. <coughs> oh, I mean, ultimately, you have a whole lot of opportunities up in that area. The Long Trail is not that far away. So, and right with the, the Paddler's Trail, I mean, you have a long term potential of being a one heck of a recreational <coughs> area right down in, that, yep. down in that location. Now, the thing is, how do we get those people up to downtown to spend their money in the stores? That's, Lots of works and signage and some other things come involved, but I have a potential there. That has the potential to be a real, real, real uh, excellent, excellent recreational area. I have um, at least twice a week somebody comes up to me to, especially this summer, over the course of the summer, people have been showing my ear about mountain biking trails and the opportunities after going to Cricket Hill and Hyde Park or Burke or some of the other communities around that have multi use trails. Um, and really talking about it, the awesome opportunities in those communities and, and really seeing opportunities for that in Johnson and wanting that to happen in Johnson. So I'm really in, enthused for multi-use and, and um, trails in, in Johnson. I think it's great. Yeah, and Walter, I have a contact of the man who um, was sort of the pioneer to build the trails um, Brain Tree Randolph area that has really transformed those communities, um, and he's more than willing to help whomever you know um, with with ideas and how they did it down there. So okay. I'd be happy to pass that. Well, I, I have I'm a lot of saying. experience in trail building, okay. and et cetera, et cetera, and I know I can pick up a phone call and I have a whole lot of resources at my disposal. So okay, uh, I'm just saying uh, communities that have done name, this. Yes. And I don't know if you've been to Randolph lately, but it has completely changed. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's got amazing restaurants and performing arts space, and it's just booming. Anything <clears throat> oh, yeah. else from us you need? Unless you have any questions for me, directions for me, or go forth. You build it, they will come. <laughs> That's my feeling. <laughs> this is your easy lift. When you go to the trustees, they're a whole different breed. I know, they... <laughs> Is there, it looks like maybe there are other people here that are interested in this topic. Uh, I can just throw out the most prominent I'm not the president of the Strong Song. Yeah. So uh, our meetings are every the second Tuesday of every month. Okay. I'd love to have you come in and talk to us about that. Co-use trails, vast trails, and co-use dining. Like we have walkers, snowshoers, cross-country skiers, dog walkers, you name it. Fat tire bikes and we'll You'll be on the short list. First, I need to get all the, the, the bosses to sign off. Yeah, just, uh, please come see us. Yes. We have no issues. We have, we have some plans for trail improvement before our North Shack down. So That's what I want to know about and how yeah. we can work together. Yeah, that's true. Right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put uh, any bicycle on it. It's just full of boulders and we need to yeah. work on it. And then ultimately, two signage is probably co signage is possible. Anyone else got some comments or concerns, issues? Thank you. Oh, well, I was just fast. <laughs> 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 so well, not really concerns or issues, really more just of a an FYI that that site um, is primarily mapped near wintering area. Um, and so just to keep that in mind when we're talking about biking and trails and all this development is uh, some consideration for the wildlife habitat that exists on the site now. And that's sort of what the discussion with the Conservation Commission was when Walter came. Um, hence the tentative approval we want to we want to see what's what the ideas are um, and get a sense of the use some of those examples that we put out there have extremely high use and with people pushes out animals so just to keep that in mind when we're moving forward with the process would be, be valuable noted so noted anyone else your opportunity going once going twice 
Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is Charlie Hancock? No. Is is there anything that anyone else is here special for? Or? I have a request on the other business if we could, uh, when you get there. Well, just go ahead right now. So uh, it came to my attention today, uh, Bob, you're going to blow my phone up with text messages, um, that the town adopted an ordinance 13 years ago in the class three roads uh, to 18 years. Mm -hmm. That requires any entity be using that. Uh, it doesn't specifically say for recreational purposes, but I, I believe that's the intent of the ordinance, that they be registered uh, with the VASA and uh, properly insured the certificate on board and traveling those. Uh, we were unaware of that until recently. When we do our trail work, the snowmobile club, we use four wheelers because the areas in Cape Renach and the Over Hill area are so remote. When we're doing the ridge work or uh, brush cutting, the equipment, the manpower to get up in there, uh, the four wheelers make that doable. Without that, I'm not sure how we get it done. But the, the four of them we use are from our volunteers there, owned by the club. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd love to come back in front of the board uh, on an agenda item to seek a waiver for our club for only when we are doing trail maintenance, such that we wouldn't have to uh, purchase and, and go through the expense of bassing three, four wheelers uh, in order to get trail maintenance work. Yeah, you're right. The intent of that ordinance when it was written was for the recreational, um, this is, you guys this are caught up in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's something we never thought of, I, I don't right. believe, but, yeah. I don't think there's any intent to, to, to go after the vast program all yeah. that, it was, it was just oversight. Like, yeah, uh, it probably was. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Eric. Uh, I guess, go back into your, all right, so next up is the uh, draft social media policy. Uh, so the draft social media policy for Town Johnson is uh, really just the VLCT's model policy uh, with our specifics filled in. I've read through the policy. It generally makes sense. Um, it, I believe it's compatible with our personnel policy uh, when it comes to violations by employees. And that's the only potential conflict that I identified with our existing policies. Um, the main function of this is it identifies conduct, conduct and uh, spaces where we allow replies and spaces where we don't. So conduct, uh, generally covered in section four, uh, and then a couple more specifics, but uh, conduct is, is what we as representatives are allowed to do. This would, as written, also cover our volunteers. And what our volunteers are uh, subject to for at, when they're acting in their capacity as a representative of the town. So it would affect things like the conservation committee when the conservation committee is posting about the conservation committee. Uh, it wouldn't affect people's personal pages or personal, you know, you can have your personal Facebook page and you can post whatever you want to it, but does the conservation committee have a Facebook page? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's another one that I need to add here. Uh, <laughs> that gets, one of the things that we're not quite ready for this is we need an inventory of all of the ways that we communicate to people. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to cover our volunteers, especially, I'm not sure which of our volunteers have Facebook pages. Uh, 
our Woods Hole Volunteer Committees have Facebook pages, and we're going to need an inventory of that. Historical Society has one. Well, the Brad the Brad Oven has a Facebook page now. Um, Is that but, include web pages, Brian, or are you just talking Facebook pages? I'm looking for both. We have one of each. <laughs> Um, it would be any social media like Instagram, mechanism, Twitter, in, Instagram, yeah. uh, all, everything that we designate as an official method of communication. Anything that we acknowledge represents the town organization. Uh, so we would want to generally consider Instagram, Facebook, all social media. Uh, so looking at the, um, the do your homework part, it seems to me that we before we can discuss this intelligently, we need to have a list of, of all of this stuff, which is what you're talking about, the inventory. And uh, you know, then you're going to have to decide uh, with regard to that, what do we see that's important about that? And, and the question is, what do we want to accomplish was one of the questions that they're doing. You know, it looks to me like uh, you know, they highlight in here their um, the benefits of communicating, of pulling in ideas, the hazards of uh, we don't want to be treated uh, like our big tech firms are in Europe for failure to maintain and monitor. And uh, you know, there, there, there looks like there's a fairly large scale obligation and a liability if you, if you're not just a government thing dispensing government wisdom, but if you are taking comments back in, there are benefits to comments back in. Uh, I think we need to assess, first of all, what do we have, what's it used for, what's the purpose of it, and, uh, you know, can we get by with just treating it as government out, or do we have to open it up for, com for comment? And yeah. without knowing what we have, I mean, we, have, we learned tonight about, you know, I learned tonight about ones I didn't know existed, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah before we can move much further we'll, we'll have to have a complete inventory and have the discussion but there is a little bit more about this that i think is worth bringing up uh, now so I, I, the majority of this is, is to uh, an agreement on the conduct of uh we're term, term, using the term here municipal officials and that covers anybody who represents the municipality in an official capacity so it's elected officials, it's appointed officials, it's volunteers, staff, everybody who represents us. Uh, and we have outgoing platforms that we're, in this, dividing up into two pieces, and this is covered in section five. Uh, we cover, we'll group some of them into, uh, what they call the, the term here is the government speech forum. So this is something that's just one way, that this is just outgoing. It's the way we use our website currently, that we post things on our website, but there's no discussion on the website about anything really. It's just where the municipal officials are the only ones that can post to the website, and that's it. Then we have limited public forums, which are things like the town Facebook page where we put things out in an official capacity, but then people who are not officials can comment on them. And this is where it's gonna get the most complicated, is that we have people who are not officials commenting on it, and then we have officials that want to engage with it. And so that's gonna be, that interface between the two is gonna be a real challenge point. Um, and that gets into Uh, section six, which is the guidelines that we would expect our users and commenters to abide by. Um, we may want to change these, especially after we get our complete inventory done. Some of the things that are appropriate for one forum might not be appropriate for another, so we might further subdivide these into additional categories if we want to apply different guidelines. But right now, the kind of simple version is there's one set for outgoing only, and then there's one for that interface between the public and, and municipal officials. Um, this is, generally we can, we have the authority to monitor content and control content, and that includes comments from the public in our 
uh, in our spaces. We can't do, we can deal with what somebody posts on another Facebook page, but we can deal with comments and posts that are on our Facebook page. Um, and this is kind of a code of conduct that we expect people to abide by. We will need to make this visible so that people understand it, but we, this is enforceable. Uh, we can, you know, Facebook won't do it for us, but we can enforce a code of conduct on the spaces that we control. Uh, we just have to decide what that code of conduct is and make sure that people know about it before they engage. Uh, what our, our, problem, our potential problem with this is trying to surprise people with it if they don't know what to expect. Is it really there going to be a problem with uh, accountability on our part? We're, we're, we have potential liability. You know, are we going to have time for this? Uh, what are, you know, we're going to have an obligation to monitor. We, and I think you really need to, we need to have a, a accounting of what sort of time we'll need to go in here and who will put in the time. I also noticed in this when you looked at it that uh, that the, the commentators, we're going to have a agent or, or a representative and that agent is going to say which of the say of the people here are able to comment on that you know because we're expressing positions for the town yeah, so it, it's a complex thing yes um, you know there are benefits out there but uh, so see. so the one way outgoing that'd be very easy for us to control we could have a policy and you know thou shall only it'll only be government officials putting it out there thou shall only you know put out there certain type of messages um, something like um, the other social medias that are more interactive they're a lot harder to control as, as Doug said but what I also read in here was the monitoring it you you've got to have someone that's going to monitor it regularly or it looks arbitrary and uh, you know if you're enforcing the policy at one time but then there's nobody monitoring it at some later time and not enforcing it so who would do that and where would you know and who could do that I mean, that's a lot of time yeah. you sit yeah. there on social media all day long well the boilerplate says designated agent tenant yeah, I mean, yeah, but he doesn't have time to do that. that. No, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what I said. You know, monitor all of it. It's, it's, uh, in this, I'm, I only listed myself as the designated agent for uh, the point of contact to report violations. Okay. Uh, yes. And I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm subscribed to every Facebook Town of Johnson group that I can find. I actively seek them out. There aren't that many comments on a daily basis. Um, even I think, you know, I think we got 12 on a comment recently that was like huge. I mean, it's not. It doesn't. It's not going to take that much time. Um, it's not, but it. The response time matters. Yeah. Uh, so I I think that we're I think that we can handle it. Yeah. But it is good to be aware of it, and when we do. A full inventory of everything it's going to be important to think about that too that the number of comments can be a little bit deceptive because whether somebody comments or not we have to respond in a timely fashion whenever a comment shows up right but what's a time that i mean it's within i mean if you're yeah, yeah. might depend on what's said and how much umbrage somebody takes about it yeah, I, I think that that a more controversial, I think that that's a very public perception kind of thing of what a timely response is. Uh, maybe we yeah. add some language in here saying that a, a timely fashion is within 24 hours. Um, but that might help us or, or, or We can exclude it. I, yeah, I don't like. I typically don't use a computer over the weekend. I, I'm, I, I think we need a policy, but I think it, it's, it's got to go, we need, at least need to think about it. One of the things that is that the, the interplay between private 
uh, postings and public postings. And there's a section on page three which says municipal officials are discouraged from using personal accounts to comment on or post municipal information to municipal social media platforms. And I think uh, there's uh, some First Amendment and other interplay. Uh, I'm curious what we have presently about, do we have a policy, evidently we have a policy for employees, but do we have a, do we have a policy for select board and other people as to what, you know, they can post on their personal thing and how do we define municipal business? We don't currently have anything like that. Uh, this is here, I think that this is here, not reading, you know, kind of trying to read the tea leaves. Uh, I think that this is here about potential violations of the open meeting form. That if a municipal official, this comes up most often with a group like the select board. If I was to post on Facebook, you know, meeting coming up on Monday, we're going to talk about these topics. Then, you know, you on your personal Facebook page say, great, looking forward to, you know, supporting the uh, bike trails. Are we coordinating votes? Are we starting to, you know, campaign in a public, not warned space uh, to coordinate votes for the public meeting? Uh, it's, it's potentially hazardous, which is why we, there's a caution in here of the safest thing is don't reply uh, using your on official business, don't reply to it using a personal account. Uh, it's also not, I mean, it might be good to kind of put it out there as like, this is the best practice. It's completely unenforceable. I mean, yeah. I can put whatever I want up there on the town Facebook page. Um, and you guys might not like it. You, you can't do anything to me to, yeah. <laughs> in response. So Especially I mean, for elected officials. Yeah. There's, that's it, there's nothing. There's no means for censure, there's no need, means for penalizing me for that. Yeah. The last sentence is, elective officials found in violation of this policy may be subject to private or public admonishment and may be asked to resign their office. And there's a footnote that says, if, uh, unless there's a local ordinance or charter permission that states otherwise, such request shall not be considered an order for the elected official to resign. But it certainly is, uh, Casting aspersions. It is. Yeah, I, I would want to look at that before we adopted it. It doesn't sound like it's enforceable at all. It wouldn't be enforced. I mean, I guess we could ask them or something to resign, but I'm more concerned with if this means that I couldn't, assuming I could find Facebook. Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> so I may not be qualified to speak here, but assuming I could find Facebook, could I say Walter was here and I loved his idea? You know, or am I prohibited from saying that because I am ultimately might be a voter? Of course you can say that. But isn't that good in municipal business? You're not discussing pending municipal business. But I, so I would suspect that that's... But you're also a, a, a citizen, too. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. That, that's what I'm, I'm sort of... Anyway. Um, yeah, no, it, Social media is a huge problem for open meetings because you can you have a certain amount of control over who can see posts and it's kind of public and it's kind of not uh, and you can carry on these discussions and you know when you get a whole board of people if everybody's on Facebook and everybody's friends with each other you know can you do anything that's not an open meeting violation. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of social media is it's social yeah. <laughs> mediating, you know, and cross-pollinating and... And these are open platforms. They're not, we're not designating that. We're not banning or blocking certain users or we're not doing these behind curtains. Yeah, it, it's tricky. It's, it's gray, I understand. Morrisville had reason to 
want to have that policy, didn't they recently? More I, I believe they did. Can you answer Care that? Care to comment? Nope. Wise man. Sorry. That's a good Why answer. is it a terrible thing to voice your opinion? Like, I'm actually very new to this. What's your name? I'm, I'm Gary. Hey, Gary. Um, I don't know any of you. I, I assume you're all elected. But if once you get elected, how often do people come and find out what your actual opinion is? Where if you're looking on social media and you say, hey, he's actually pro-trail, which aligns with my values, that's why I voted for him. Like, it's a way to check in. I mean, if you look at other offices in the country, it's a, I don't agree with that. Like, I'm, it can, you know, if you put it out there, I mean, it's at your own risk. You say there's nothing that can be done to you. Well, we don't have to vote for you anymore. Um, or public opinion can come the other way. Just, I don't know if that's necessarily how it works, but um, there is like there is a consequence to everything you say. Sometimes it's very minimal, but sometimes it can be very large. Um, and if I can, I'm sorry, were you also at Gary? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, that's true, and that's, I think, what I was trying to, similar to what I was trying to say before was that there's a difference between talking about something that we've had a decision about and we've finished a decision about and something that is pending. If we've got you know a vote coming up on a particular day, it talking about an issue for elected officials could be that they're trying to uh, coordinate because everything that that goes into a public decision, all of the reasoning that goes into that public decision should be available to the public. That's the purpose of the open meeting law is that the deliberations and the facts. Uh, that the officials use to make a decision is available to the public so that they can understand how that decision was reached. Uh, so a discussion of a pending item in a not a public meeting is, is a violation. But then, like Doug's point, if, if you wanted to say tomorrow, post something about, you know, Walter gave a great presentation today. I really appreciated him coming in. I totally support this project. We made a decision about that. So it's not a pending item anymore. So he wouldn't be, he would, there's no potential for him to be trying to coordinate a vote or trying to rally or, or, or lobby the, the other members to decide one way or the other. Uh, so it's, It when matters, the, the whole context around the discussion matters about whether, uh, what, what the perception of it is. Uh, and intent for an open meeting violation, intent doesn't really matter very much. It doesn't really matter if you didn't mean to do it. It's very much about if you broke protocol or not. Yeah, Gary, if you came up to me earlier tonight and said, you know, what's my position on Walter's proposal for the trails? And I, between you and I, I could say I plan on supporting it for reasons X, Y, Z, and Z. That's, that's perfectly fine. If, however, I had gone on a social media before the vote and said, I'm going to support Walter's proposal for X, Y, and Z reasons, and all the other select board members, and maybe not the community, or or is on copy to that, and what and Doug comes back and says, well, I'm not going to support it for these other reasons. That is where we are in a clear violation open meeting because we are having a me a meeting outside of the meeting. That's where we can get in trouble. But, but if you just came up to me personally and said, you know, I supported you and voted for you because of your s certain values, and, and I tell you, yes, I plan on supporting Walter's proposal, that's perfectly fine. It's just if we did it in a social media uh, method, then it would be potentially a violation. We have that same problem on Tuesday Night Live. 
frankly, I mean, it's a similar thing. That, you know, these two are talking to each other on Tuesday Night Live, and I come up and start saying, hey, you know, what are we going to do about you know, uh, Railroad Street? That's a violation of open meeting law. Um, three people quorum. But because we're adults and trusted, and, uh, it, you know, we, yeah. we, we know that that's a violation of policy, and so we don't do it. But, yeah, uh, this is an, yeah, we operate now uh, with a lot of trust in ourselves that the public has given us. Right. So this is codifying some of that, and uh, we need to to consider these things. Uh, and again, that that's a good point about, you know, the municipal officials are discouraged from using personal accounts to comment or on or post municipal information that's discouraged but we can't hold an individual member from doing so yeah we don't have the authority but yeah. it, it's a real gray area i think at the time i was a village trustee and uh, we were uh, discussing equivalent users if everybody's familiar with sewer equivalent user different tiers, and I was against equivalent users, but I was outvoted by the board, okay? So the board's decision was to go forth with equivalent users. So I think if I got on social media and squawked about that and tried to put forth my views on that particular subject, equivalent users, I could be taken as undermining the board or something of that nature. Uh, and you'd be going against like a board policy if the board said a decision is made and the board is gonna go with it. Even though you are a loser on this particular thing, you know, you're not gonna try to undermine the board, <coughs> see? And uh, we were even at a, an open meeting and we were taking questions from the audience and I was asked a direct question what's your opinion of equivalent, equivalent user okay so I took it as if a taxpayer asked me a question and so I gave him my opinion and I was even chastised for that before but I went back with them and said listen you know uh, it's my opinion uh, they asked me a taxpayer asked me a question it's my responsibility to give them an answer. So that is a different situation if somebody asks me a question versus me going on social media and ticked off about it and try to change the board. So I think that would be a violation. Clear as mud now? Yeah. <laughs> I, think that, I think this discussion indicates the problem. Yeah. It's very complicated. So, what's so what's the next steps? Uh, I'm going to finish. It. <laughs> it's too complicated. I'm going to finish the inventory of all of the municipal official uh, forms. Okay. So whether it's things like the town, more like the town website, or things more like the Facebook, Instagram, other social media things. Um, We'll get that done over the next couple months, and then we'll work it out from there. But it's, probably it's going to take us a little while to get an inventory done. In the meantime, we should have discussions about things like we had tonight about uh, what are the what are the pitfalls for adopting this. Where, where are we going to trip ourselves up, and what are the? This was a, a leak. Yep. Uh, boilerplate. Uh, and I've got, so the I think I've got some additional documentation from uh, a couple of hearings I went to. Uh, so other see communities, if I can find some additional support material. Other communities have adopted something very similar to this. Yep. Okay. I'll see if I can find some commentary and some additional analysis of this policy and other policies. Okay. I have a question. Yep. Under this policy, if Greg were to go on to our Facebook page and say, uh, I really hate Tuesday Night Live and I 
think it's terrible. It's uh, in response to a Tuesday Night Live thing. We wouldn't have the means to take that down because that's Greg's opinion. It doesn't violate any of the policies in here. But I believe so. so yeah, it, there's nothing same. about that you have to support us or anything. It's basically you have to be civil. You have to be civil and not use curse words. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, but there's nothing about you have to agree with us or even though you have to be especially nice, just. <laughs> you know, not too inflammatory. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to like every single activity. Yeah. 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 No, it, it's the list is a little bit long, but it's you know things like profane language, copyright material, copywritten material, uh, encouragement of illegal activity, uh, yeah. personal attacks, threats of violence, like. The, the stuff that's banned from public comment is pretty egregious stuff that we wouldn't want to have on any of our stuff you don't do on primetime television. Yeah. yeah. I think once we have a list of all everything we have, we'll see why the positives are that we want that and why we like to step in. Yeah. Okay, so we'll come back to it. Yep. Repairs at the Holcomb House. All right. So next item you have, I have, I got a quote from a village builder and a verbal code, verbal discussion with uh, Stanley Weisskamp. Um and they're both very similar. Uh, you know that the the porch. On, that reaches the apartments on the Holcomb House is rotten um, and out of left. Uh, a decent amount of the decking, maybe all uh, of the decking needs to be replaced and the rails. Uh, the, both of these are, like I said, they're very similar. Um, you know, they're assuming that the town would be able to deal with removing the concrete steps. Uh, we have the equipment necessary, so we could make pretty short work of it compared to at least the two contractors that I spoke with. Neither of them have the equipment on hand, so they'd need to rent it, take delivery. It would add a decent amount to the, uh, the proposal. Um, they both came in at five thousand. Yeah. Okay. What are the repairs on the apartments you're talking about? Uh, the the apartment, the porch for okay. the apartments. I, I just wanted to distinguish between the uh, historical society portion of this and the apartment portion. So this is, this is the porch. This isn't anything new. It's just. The price tag on this is high enough that I wanted to bring it before the board instead of doing a routine. I certainly didn't anticipate this being $5,000. Uh, but I've gotten two quotes now that are both. When was the lease recently signed for those projects? Or is it coming up so No, it was just signed recently. June. June. Thank you. I think we ought to, you know, kind of change the subject a little bit. But we're still talking about the Holcomb House. I'd like to see maybe that apartment closest to the road vacated and give more space to the historical society. We can, you know, start doing a little planning about that. Uh, I know that the uh, porch though is part of Donnie's apartment, right? No, this is for the uh, uh, that front apartment. Oh, it's for the front apartment? On the right hand side. Oh, okay. Is going to be a complete replacement of the whole porch? Uh, not absolutely everything, but pretty much everything you can see. Uh, the roof will stay, uh, but yeah, the decking, the steps, the rails, uh, the posts should be able to be saved, but they might have to chop the bottom off the post and put a new footing on it. Now, you contacted somebody else and they never got back to you, did you? Uh, no, I, I've talked to two folks. Just two, okay. I thought there was some talk about three at one time. 
I, I was looking at a third when I heard back from okay. uh, the other. Um, I'm going for a couple more bids if the board would like, but I've received two that are in the same ballpark. Uh, Is the board prepared to move on this? Where do we fund this from? Mm. Uh, this is going to come from our building fund, which is going to be pretty well depleted. Oh, we have the hundred and thirteen thousand. We could apply towards it. Um, yeah, oh, this, we will probably be dipping into reserve funds to make mm -hmm. to meet this plus. Uh, I have a question from Lois, Mr. Chair. Yes. Somebody was up there recently and they saw uh, somebody come out on the porch and they were, you know, I don't want to say heavy, I, I guess I can say heavy, and they noticed it kind of really dipped down. Do you think that ought to be uh, taped off or something until it's fixed? Do you, have you noticed anything kind of... Uh, well, we have no idea because we don't use that porch at all. But somebody said they saw somebody walking up on it and it looked like it moved. I Put have no idea. I, I don't believe that either of the, the tenants are bulky. Okay. Um, Maybe it was somebody just stopping by or something and uh, trying to look in the window or something. Nobody from the public uses that yeah. porch. I, no, we so. didn't receive a caution from either of the people we do. We had the contractors we had go and check it out physically and evaluate it. We didn't receive any warning about it being an imminent failure. Well, if you don't use it, then maybe we don't need it then. Well, they, the tenants use it. The tenants. They're, they're, the tenants. They have money. Yeah, it's the only way into the apartment. Should we send the health officer? <laughs> is is the scope of work necessary? I, I can understand replace choice that needs to be jacked back to level. Replacing all decking, is it rotted out? It's under cover. It should be painted. Um, does it, do we need to replace all decking? We might be able to salvage some of the decking, but they both have expressed that uh, a significant amount of the decking is going to need to be replaced, if well, not all of it. I looked at it and it looked like there had been some of it replaced. That's what you had said, so yeah. I, I think we might be able to salvage more than they're estimating here. But uh, is, is the roof leaking? Not that I'm aware of. Is this, this is, okay. But there's one rail that you could, if you put any weight on it at all, it'd break right off. Maintaining the top of That one that's closest to the parking lot. Yes. Bad, bad, bad. So. Well, it's, yeah, I hate to delay it. Because it's just going to get worse if we let it sit another season. It'd it, get more expensive. I would strongly recommend that we don't wait another season on it. I mean, it's, for me, it's do we five thousand is right at the limit where you know do we want to put this up to bid or do we want to hire an existing contractor? I think we can hire an existing contractor. We got two competing bids; they both came in about the same. And this bidder can do it next week. He uh, said he this was. Next week would have been uh, the week I was on vacation. Okay, so we've already missed that window. Yes. Now it's October. Okay. Perhaps October. It'd be good to get a whole kind of picture of what's going on in the whole house. If you, I mean, I know it's an old building. It's hard to know. But, you know, Dean was here a month or so ago, and he wanted us to, you know, uh, insulate some more area and make yep. some more investments there. But it sounds like... We kind of keep having these unexpected maintenance things that are pretty expensive. I, is there a way to have an inspection done to get an overall sense of what's going on and, and start planning for that? We could hire uh, <laughs> an inspector to come to do an evaluation for us. Is that our only option? <laughs> I, 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 if that's what we decide on, that you know, if we want to get a bigger picture of it, I, I can't think of a better way of, of doing it. Anyway. Um, 
you know, I we do have some town employees who have some building experience. We could ask one of them, but it's really outside their job description. So I think we should pay them as though they were a contractor. And if we're going to pay them as though they were a contractor, we have to take it up to bid. Uh, so I think hiring from outside on this is. I think that makes feelings on this. It, it talks about uh, removing all rot and trim and all this other stuff. And so we could end up having new with old. You know, sometimes you're almost better to, to clean the whole thing up and have all new. And then you start off uh, at a certain point and you don't go down the road and have that section that was almost rotten be rotten five years down the road and then have to come back and do it again. Um, I think if we're going to do the job, it ought to be done correctly. And if it does cost a little more money, we, I think it would be money better spent. Do you think, Brian, that we should wait to do this uh, for an inspection, or we we could have an outside consultant look at everything else but this and just go ahead with that? I, I would say the latter. I, I would recommend that we take care of this, and we, if we're interested in a more complete picture, we bring somebody in to help us out with that, and we think of that as the rest of the house. Uh, that we know that this needs the attention. I think that we can work with the builder uh, to kind of set that parameter. He talks about replacing rotten trim. I've said that I think we can salvage some of the decking. I think that we can work with whoever we have and set what's acceptable to reuse and salvage uh, so that we, that whatever we want it to be, that you know, we want him to reuse as much as possible or, you know, replace with new whenever. Um, he has to take anything out. My standard would be whatever you do ought to have the same, whatever you leave ought to have the same life expectancy of what you're taking out. Yeah. And replace it. Have we worked with either of these contractors before? Uh, Stanley Westcom is oh, yeah. the guy who's doing this building right. and Village Builders, uh, they just did some other work on the Holcomb House. Uh, I'm not personally familiar with them, but I've had decent second-hand reports. Do you have a recommendation with regard to which one? I would, I'd probably pick Stanley because uh, he's done good work for us here. Uh, when will he be available? I don't have Stanley's availability right now. But we've got his trailer out in the parking lot still, so. But he hasn't started a new job as of today. Anybody comfortable making a motion? Well, I think the deck ought to be all in place with new stuff. If you're going to do it. Who you want to make a motion of who you want to hire and an amount not to exceed so many dollars. But the way this is written, we're talking about just removing what is rotten and replacing it. And that's what between the five and the six thousand dollars, if we have all new deck on that porch, it's probably going to run more money. So amount not to exceed True, but if you do it that way, it might not get done. No, we'd have to come back for the men. We'd have to come back, but we could. I'll look at that. It's just this. Uh, the, uh, the way do you, you believe Stanley's going to be able to do it this season? I believe Stanley will. What you could is uh, what we did for the Sorber Society is that we empowered the Sorber Society to select. Uh, because their bids came in close to the same price, we empowered them to select whoever could do it sooner. Yeah, well, uh, empower, can I empower you? Uh, I yeah. move that we empower Brian's uh, story to uh, uh, have the repair work needed 
either by one of the two builders, a uh, village builder or Stanley, as you feel uh, the best suit our needs um, for uh, to do the work described for labor materials not to exceed five thousand dollars. A motion. We have a second. So you're not going to address the deck in on your motion. One. Um, I think what he, I, I, I prefer what they're saying here. Um, actually, this, one, this does this say, one does say all decking. This says replace all, all decking, so that would address your, your concern. My general idea is if there's wood there that's not rotten, why replace it? Um, but I, I can trust Brian and the builders to make the best assessment on that and not micromanage it. So we have a motion, but we don't have a second yet. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? So you will assess, you'll be asking more questions and you'll be choosing between two I'll ask seconds. a few more questions and it'll primarily be on timeline. So this is going to be going with Stanley. Yep, Brian. It's a Brian. But you, you do see that decking in there. That's on his proposal. Yes. So you're going to push for it. I, I'll have the discussion with him. I can push for a complete replacement of the decking with Stanley if that's what the board would like. I just disagree. You're not going to do it. I just disagree with Mike on okay. it, but I, I'm going to leave it to Brian's discretion. My personal opinion is if wood's not rotten and it's not broken, you paint it, you prime it, you paint it properly, you maintain it, it lasts. Uh, Yes. Not all of the decking there is the same age, so I don't know that it needs to all be replaced, but maybe it does. Uh, I'll have a, a greater discussion, find out what the assessment is about, you know, do they think it'll last significantly, the newer section will last significantly longer, is it worth it just to try and save it or not? This man here, this village builder, he came in for $5,000, right? Yep. Stanley's coming in around six, correct? No, he was uh, five thousand and change. He was a little bit higher, but it was okay. But this man was going to give a new deck, complete new deck for five thousand. And the motion was for up to five thousand dollars. Stanley's a little over. Stanley will work with the the price we give him. If we are spending five thousand dollars, Stanley will will work with the price that we So we got motion on the floor, giving Brian the ability to choose between the two bidders out of the price not to exceed 5000 Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, seeing five saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Motion carried. BLCT annual business meeting. So the annual business meeting for BLCT will be held at their did vote. Uh, uh, at the town fair um, this year held in Killington. And we need to well we don't strictly speaking have to, but we traditionally do send uh, Eric to vote on our behalf. What day is meeting. it? It is Wednesday, October 2nd, starting at 1 p.m. And that's in Killington, you said? Yep, the Killington Grand Resort Hotel. Well, I guess you'll have a good time down there. Yeah. Anybody else planning on going? Uh, I can get a uh, schedule of all the different panels that are being held at Town Fair. Um, it's good. You, we're, you're not going this year, are you, Rose Um The office staff usually goes when it's, it's alternating between Essex and Killington, and we don't traditionally go when it's in Killington. Um, but if anybody's interested, there's a, a lot of pretty interesting panels to sit in on. So the vote, board needs to vote and submit, right? 
Yes. Yeah. What's the board's pleasure? You're available out there? Yeah, you should be able to. Uh, move to uh, nominate Eric to be our voting delegate at the VLCT annual business meeting. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Community oven committee appointments. Okay. Two candidates, right? Two candidates. Uh, Jen Burton and Mark Woodward have expressed an interest in joining the, the uh, community oven. And I understand the committee's already approved. Yeah, the committee's interested in uh, having them joined. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Second. Motion and second to appoint both applicants. Any discussion? It would be great to have them on. They have a lot of history on the oven and knowledge. I'm happy to see this. All old favor signify saying aye. 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 All opposed? Update on this building. All right. Apologies, my uh, placeholder topic didn't get fixed, but uh, uh, the status of this building uh, has, repairs have gone pretty well this year. Uh, it was a pretty extensive section, repairing uh, and replacing quite a few windows. Uh, I think this year might be the most windows that we replaced. If not, it's pretty close. Um, we have finished the exterior, the first and second floor exterior of the building. Um, uh, with this project, we didn't encounter any terrible rot. Uh, the areas that have been problematic in other sections were still problematic. The places where we had a lot of trim tended to be a little bit rotten, and uh, a little the windows were, were in pretty bad shape too. So all those repairs have been made. Uh, we did not have to replace any uh, of the wall studs or anything that I'm aware of. Um, and we were able to you know, complete this in pretty quick time. Um, the, we did a little bit of additional work uh, for the area uh, where the clock tower meets the roof, uh, reinforcing that. Uh, if you recall, we had some leaking in the spring uh, through that area. So we should shed water from there better than we do now. Um, I was able to go up and inspect the roof and it, it m makes sense. We no longer have the valley we had before where they were, you know, the roof was draining down right into uh, a straight wall section on the clock tower. Uh, it now smooths out and routes water around the clock tower. Um, it's not it's a retrofit, so it's not perfect, but it's considerably better than it was before. Um, we also replaced uh, some area around the vent uh, that was on the parking lot, the south facing side of the clock tower. Uh, you'll notice that there is a lot less decorative trim and the uh, louvered vent is much smaller. Um, and it's a real vent now. It is. Before it was not a vent. Yeah, the louvered vent that was there had at some point been blocked up. Uh, the, as Eric recalls it, the we think that there was too much moisture and things getting in through the vent, and that might be why it was blocked up. Uh, but when it was blocked up, there was not an alternative vent or any alternative relief constructed, so it was just blocking up and trapping moisture inside the clock tower uh, just in a different way than it was before. Uh, so we now have ventilation in there, so we should experience less uh, condensation, uh, trapped moisture. It was funny that board, that, that piece of plywood was cut circular though. Yeah. You know that? If they were behind it, you think that it just put a square piece there if they were going to do it. Almost looked like it was that way from the beginning. You know what? Did you see Maybe that? Thing? I did. Yeah, I, I looked it over in good shape. And I, it was a strange looking contraption. Did you see it, Eric? No. No, yeah. no it, it was, yeah, it was a custom cut piece of wood to fit yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, 
to block up that vent. Mm. Uh, but, but, uh, but there was also they could have just a square piece. I don't yep. understand why it was round. Like well, there's also the uh, window screen in between the right. so it, it was definitely at one time ventilating. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was some odd decisions. Um, so we're in pretty good shape. I think the cost on this, uh, Rosemary, did we get the? Yeah, the final bill yet. Okay. Uh, it's you know similar to what we spent last year. I think. What we're going to come down on it'll be a little bit high uh, for the roof repair uh, wasn't in the original estimate but it looks a lot better than it did that's for sure it looks really nice um speaking of uh, i think we should investigate turning off the light that is on the side of the building uh, out on the east side of the building um, I think that we're collecting a lot of our bugs and accumulation on the side of the building from the light that's on the building. We have a couple lights in the yard that shine on the building and shine on the, the flags um, that I think provide enough illumination if we were to eliminate that light. Uh, and we would have less bugs and insects accumulating on the building, so we'd, uh, we should clean it more often than we have been, but that would uh, let us go a little bit longer in between cleanings. We definitely have a spider problem up there. Yeah. That's, the light's doing it. Well, the lights are attracting the moths, and, right, and the moths are here, so the spiders the come. The spiders are coming, and then they're reproducing and getting fatter. Just more spiders and causing more trouble. Do we need a town always. entomologist? Pardon me? We need a town, town entomologist to look at this. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, well, it's just, a real missed opportunity. I yeah, mean, they, they, let's just hire, <laughs> let's hire someone to turn off this light. Yeah. That's what motion sensors are for. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's a good idea. Uh, yeah. You sold it, put a solar one out there with a motion sensor. You wouldn't have to pay any electricity. Mm -hmm. huh. We cut the village out with that. Yeah, that. That's the that's a plan, but since it was related, I wanted to bring it up. Yeah, good idea. Um, then the next two items are pretty closely related. Uh, rescheduling our regular select board meeting. Uh, it would fall on Labor Day, and then scheduling a joint meeting with the trustees. Uh, the trustees would like to meet with us after their September meeting. Which is the second Monday, correct? Right. So, and then the third Monday we have our regular meeting. Yep. So we're looking out at like the fourth Monday before we could have a meeting with the trustees and whether or not we would make that a working meeting as well or not. Or combine it with the BCA. You want to wait that long? Fourth Monday of September. The trustees want to wait that long? I don't think they do. I read their minutes. Meredith there, and she won't be. Yeah. That's her priority. But they won't. They don't want to meet until after the second Monday. So that automatically puts us out. Now, reading their minutes, they seem to be kind of ahead of the game on the uh, merger studies. Seems like they've got more information going on now than, than we do. Uh, I can send you what I've received from them. Uh, I was thinking that we'd make the presentation uh, for the joint meeting. No, but we need to be on our game for that meeting because reading their minutes, they appear as if they've digested them up pretty good and they're, and they're gonna be ready and we need to be ready too because we need to find some resolution to this whole thing. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, so at the regular meeting, we should probably get I'll plan a, a brush up on it. So take back the fourth Monday proposal to the trustees. 
I'm not available in September until the 16th. Well, this would so be the fourth would be okay, yeah. I presume. We need to do that as soon as possible, I think. And if we need a special meeting to brush up on all of the proposals, maybe we ought to consider that. Well, they don't want to meet until after their September meeting. So we, we have two things to decide on. Our first regular meeting can't happen on the day it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So we can reschedule that. We can cover a merger proposal on that. If we want to do it later that first week of September, or uh, we could do it the second week of September while they're meeting. We could do it the day after Labor Day, couldn't we? Yeah, we could. So we could do it that Tuesday or any other day that week. Oh, the bond post that day, isn't it? The bond post. that Wednesday? I'll be out of town. The day after Labor Day. It is the day after Labor Day. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday the 3rd, yeah. You're out of town for the 16th, and I'm out of town uh, the first and second week. So do we have three people for a meeting any time in the first and second week? If That's they, all we have? If, yeah. If they want to meet on the BCA or... Both of you are out at this two weeks, is that right? Yeah. I'm available. Yeah, I, I'm available too. I right? still know the value of discussing the merger proposals with you two going. Yeah. We need to hold more here for that. <coughs> You're here for the third Monday? 16th? Yes. Is it the 16th? It is. Okay. Yep. So you'll be back that day. That's the theory. The theory. You want to do the BCA ahead of our regular meeting? Because that won't take very long. Probably at least about a half hour. We did that a while back at a BCA meeting ahead of our regular meeting. So if we schedule it like 6.30? Yeah, on the 16th. So that would take care of that one. And then if the trustees are willing to meet the fourth Monday. So are we just, we're skipping the first Monday meeting altogether? So Yes. Yeah. I mean, we'll be meeting twice in the month anyhow, but yeah. we just won't be having a work session meeting. Then it'll be two weeks, and not it'll be the last week in September, the first week of October. No, there's one more week in September. No, in yeah. Well, you just spread the joy, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, international City Management? Yes. Meeting? Um, sorry, just circling back. So we are not having a meeting during those first two weeks for a regular select board meeting. You're right. Okay. Both Doug and I are out. So I can provide some material by email, uh, some handouts mm -hmm. uh, about the yep. uh, merger, but we won't have an opportunity to discuss. Maybe just block out a little bit of time to quick synopsis. Yeah, I'm glad we meeting. can meet beforehand. We did. Did we do that? Or did they do that? I think they did that. But yeah, they usually do. Uh, Is there any chance you could have it out before you know Thursday of next week? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Then, then I wouldn't have to be reading it on an iPhone. All right. <laughs> um. Okay. Then the International City Management Association annual meeting. So this is uh, a meeting that I'm going to. I'm not, I, I don't recall exactly 
what I told the board about this, but uh, earlier this year, I was on the, already on the board of directors for my state professional association, the VTCMA, um, the Vermont City Management Association. Uh, I was appointed as the uh, vice president for the state now, and I'm also serving on the, uh, I'm serving as Vermont's representative to the international conference for 2020. Um, that'll be held in Toronto. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that meeting, but that planning for the next year's meeting starts at this year's meeting. So I haven't gone to one of the international meetings yet. They, they call them the international meetings, but they're North America. They're not, not really that far. Away. Um, the international meeting this year is in Tennessee. I've received the uh, state scholarship and the association scholarship. Uh, so I think my expenses are pretty well covered, but I would like to, uh, this is on a different scale than the professional development the board has covered in the past. Uh, I would like this to be paid time because it is I do think I'm doing work for the town while I'm at the, this meeting. Um, uh, but I'm not, I don't need any uh, expenses covered. I've been able to cover the expenses through scholarships. And I would just say that when uh, Duncan used to serve on the board that went to DC and he was getting paid because it was considered working for the community still. You need a whole straight time or time and a half? <laughs> I, I don't think we need a formal motion, just if everyone's in consent. Then. How many days are you going to be? It is uh, October 20th to the 23rd. So I'll actually arrive on the 19th, but that's just for transportation. Uh, yeah, transportation, and there's an opening reception, but it's not. Okay. I, w I would not call that work related. So. Okay. Go forth. Good. Enjoy. Have a good time. Bring back good information. Yeah. LEDC annual meeting. Everybody get that invitation? Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sure if you did, but we have received invitations for the LEDC uh, annual meeting on a noon October 17th. Uh, we usually have some representation uh, for the town there. Uh, I think I'll be able to attend, but it wouldn't hurt to have a backup uh, because I've got ICMA and a couple other meetings. I've, I've got quite a bit happening in October. So They put on a good lunch, too. Yeah. Where is it? Right at the Gym Technical ABC. Center. Uh. Oh, that's where it usually is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll try to take that in. Right. You never pass up a nice meal. Yeah, free lunch. Good idea. Yeah. Do we have to pre-register or do you? We should, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can do that online. Yep. Did you want to go? So, uh, I think so. Mike, you're yeah. interested. Yeah, I'm all interested. Do mm. you want a day or two to decide? Or? Yeah, I've got to talk to the husband. Okay. <laughs> Just in my part. Yeah. Uh, let me know before the weekend and I'll do registration on Friday. You got okay. it? Oh, Doug? You're right on straight, aren't you? That's easy. Oh. Tell chapter 11. So, I was hoping it wouldn't be recorded. Maris Tell uh, has filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. I don't believe that the town has any claim against them. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, what their history with our local talc mine is, uh, but I want to make sure that this is more for public information than anything. Uh, if anybody believes that they have a claim against uh, Imries, I M E R Y S uh, talc, that they're filing for Chapter 11. Uh, if they want to, if anybody has a claim against them, they need to file on that. Before the were the operators here? 
I don't have a record of them, but they could have. Would they could have had some relation to one of them where they weren't holding land, but were involved in some other capacity uh, that I wouldn't have easy access to the records. The state that's looking at the hazardous waste site, would they have a listing of the possible stakeholders that, that we could check? They might. <laughs> I'll forward that on to the... For a few minutes? <laughs> I'll forward that on to them. Uh, they might, they've done quite a bit of research about everybody who's had a hand in it, not just landowners, which is, mm -hmm. the land records, the, the, the history information that I have easy access to. Uh, but again, that was more, it's especially important for public information that folks uh, who think they might have a claim should know that they need to act on that. Uh, no real update on the light industrial park. Uh, I was hoping to hear in July. Uh, July, at the beginning of August, they issued the um, grants for the Northern Borders Regional Commission grants for um, forestry related projects. Uh, but they haven't released any other grant awards yet. Um, so we weren't forestry related, so it's not surprising that we haven't heard yet. Okay. Other than we'd we, like to hear. But it still should be coming. It should be. A uh, little encouraging news. Uh, the feds have directed that areas designated as economic opportunity zones, like Johnson, uh, should receive special consideration on all federal grant applications. So we should get a little boost on all of our applications that are out right now. Good. So. Any chance we get? Yep. We, we skipped the sheriff's department. Uh, that was the one you got beat. Actually, yeah, I did skip over the sheriff's department. Did, uh, but you received it by email. Did you have someone? Yeah, I want to talk about the sheriff's department. Okay. Remember we had uh, talked about in the past that we have towns that are not under sheriff's contract. And occasionally from time to time uh, the state police can't reach there in time and then the sheriff's department is called out and some of these towns don't pay the bill when the sheriff uh, sends it. I, I think that we ought to ask the sheriff to uh, send bills to these towns and if they don't pay, I think the select board ought to send a letter to these towns who aren't paying because we have to make up a difference. Our town, our taxpayers make that difference up. And it's not fair to the Johnson ta taxpayers that we have to pay for other towns when they thumb their nose at the Sheriff's Department and do not pay a bill that has been given to them. So I'd like to see, be a little proactive with this. But you, you may want to talk to Roger, but that's exactly what happened some number of years ago. And the three select boards directed the sheriff because what was happening was the sheriff's office was getting there before the state police because they would call them before they even responded. And like you said, it was a burden on the three towns that are paying for the sheriff's department, giving a free service to a much larger community. And the three select boards pushed it with the, uh, the community, larger community, to reimburse us, and they refused. They, why would they pay when they're getting something for free? Basically, their attitude was, so the, the, I mean, Roger feels he has an obligation when there's a officer I understand, down. I understand. Okay, I understand. and mutual aid. But what he has changed his policy, and then you might want to check with him, see if, it, if he's changed it again, but, he would not send an officer until a state police officer was there and asking for help. And then it was a mutual aid. Okay. But, you know, if he's sending them ahead of the state police. What do you think? I don't think that's happening always. Um, but we should check and see. Okay. We should check and see. I know it was a problem 
three, four years back with uh, Eden in particular. Um, and we did send Eden a letter with the three towns and said, you, you got to pick up some slack here. They addressed that with the state police, and the state police have been much more on it, so they haven't needed the sheriff's department as much. But from time to time, as townspeople, they ask me how much we're paying for the sheriff's department. And I understand that that's in the town report, and they should look it up. I tell them what it is, and they're shocked. It's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and so it's. Uh, with, with all of our taxes going up, a possible school bond vote, uh, and the sheriffs going up, and this water business is going to be shoved down our throat here pretty quick. We we've got all kinds of expenses that are going to be really hurting our town, and we need to find any way we can to save money. Yeah. Belvedere, we did talk about this at the last, what, two weeks ago at the sheriff's meeting. Belvedere is interested, it sounds like, in some sort of traffic control coverage, maybe the way that um, they've contracted with Elmore for a certain set number of hours. The problem is to get to Belvedere, you got to go through Eden or you got to go through Watermill. So somehow if we can get one other town into the loop or perhaps two other towns, we would really be doing well. That would really help. But it is something that Roger's actively working on. Good. I thought Eden did sign up for some coverage. We had some cost sharing agreement with Eden. And some uh, I think Eden's a pony or not. Some, to some extent. So they might be willing to work with us to Maybe. a greater extent. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have another meeting with Roger soon and we'll talk about it there. Expenses are just getting out of control. It's just going to be. It has to, it's going to come to an end sometime. It has to. People just can't keep paying more and more and more year after year after year, and, they, and their wages aren't going up. So we need to do something. Well, Michael, starting from the large number, which which we know exists, I think we ought to ask the sheriff what the number, unreimbursed number is. You know, who and what and, and what time period are we talking about? I think that we ought to get an idea of the issues. All set. Thank you. Yep. Uh, any old business before we go into the additional items? Uh, one second from the old business. Um, I have not conducted the analysis of it yet, but uh, we did receive report for our, for the gravel pit. Uh, mm -hmm on the soil samples uh, or the board on the new potential gravel pit. Oh, okay. uh, so I've received it. I have to read it. It's pretty technical and long, so it's going to take some time. Uh, but the we worked with uh, Vermont testing in Waterbury. Uh, they did the samples for us. It was not cheap, but uh, this provides us with kind of the final, pretty definitive answer about this. We just need to learn to read it. Does it look like it's going to be good news? I, I really don't have a, okay. enough to say about it. <laughs> Sorry. We need good uh, news. So we need all that. Uh, yeah. Can you send that to me? Sure. By digit? Is it on digit? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to make them available to you or to anybody else. The mines road and the yeah. Yeah, I got that. Um, I don't. Mine road wasn't isn't named on here, but that is one that we have. Uh, the line has been buried on Mine Road, and some and of yes. the structures are out of the right of way. Uh, so that we're making some forward progress. Uh, yeah. There was a concern that. Donna, you had emailed me about that you think one of his replacement structures might be. Uh, well, the work they did was just right in the wetland, which sort of made me wonder are we really allowed to do that? Which made me wonder, like, had they even talked to you about the plan 
at all? Not to the extent of, uh, not in our right of way was our instructions to him, yeah. was and get it out of our right of way and if he then went into the wetlands, uh, that would be a state concern. Yeah. And, and uh, it didn't seem like it, the new spot was super far off the road. I, I mean, you might be out of the right of way, but I wasn't sure. I don't know if you guys have seen it, or took it but you definitely know how far it needs to be. Um, uh, Brian Krause went up and, and said that, yeah, the, the, like I said, that one building had been relocated to outside the right of way. Okay. But, but yeah, they definitely disturbed the wetland when they did that. And I mean, to the extent that you sort of wonder, like, is that even going to be stable where they piled up the new dirt? I mean, the water, like, running right next to it. Kind of doesn't look like the greatest plan to me. But. I, I think we might make a report to wetlands. Uh, but yeah, they did. So it, it's in progress, it's getting cleaned up. Uh, okay. It's not done. And it sounds like we might have new problems. So every step forward is two backwards. Yeah. Has he said when he'll be out completely? No. Uh, Can we give him a, a timeline that we're looking for? Seems like he's getting to be late summer now. We've been pressing for this since winter. Suggestion. I don't want yeah. to. We, we never did give him a timeline, but that is a prerogative of the board. Yeah, we can set a particular date. I, I at this point, I'm happy with the progress that and the pace that he's making. That it took him a long time to start, but the most recent conversation that we had with the board, relaying that to him, kind of lit a fire, and it's we've got some movement. So I think it's stay on top of the movement that we have now. And I'm pretty confident that we're gonna, we should be in a decent spot before winter. Or we just stay on top of him because yeah. he'll stop working. That, that's the, gonna be the, the crucial point is uh, if we stop watching, it, the work might stop getting done. But yeah. yeah, I would say, I would be interested in seeing it done before snow flies for sure. Yeah. The uh, power line goes across the road. I don't believe that it crosses the road, the power line crosses the road anywhere. The post that Morrisville ran the power to is on the western side of Mine Road uh, at the, where Mine Road meets Benover. Ben Over. And his structures previously had been, also been on the western side of Mine Road. Uh, so I don't believe that the power line crosses anywhere. Does it, is it in our right away? It should, it, it is, I'm told it's buried outside of our right of way now. Good, so, so we don't have to ask about easement questions or? Right. Uh, yeah, he may have been digging in wetlands that he shouldn't have, but that's a state issue. It's kind of hard to see how it's really buried out of the right of way. I mean, it's not like there's new digging that's far off the side of the road. I would guess that it's buried right next to the road. I don't know. You might want to follow up on it. Yeah. Knowing probably oh. it should be followed up on. Alright. Okay. Uh, joint employee. Uh, yeah, I just wanted I don't know if there's an update or not. I just was hoping to keep that on the agenda. Um, the joint employee not join employee situation that we have. Uh, I have a phone call with the town of Rockingham uh, later this week. Then uh, the manager there, uh, they have joint employees and I'm gonna consult with them about how their, their arrangements have gone. We're also working on getting in touch with a couple other towns that, that don't have joint employees, uh, but do share, that, that are in a similar situation that have gone through Either they never had joint employees or they've gone through, hopefully we can find somebody who's gone through the transition of going from joint to not joint. Um, but we're trying to talk to some folks that have gone through similar experience right now. Uh, it is a topic that Meredith and I are planning to report for um, at the joint meeting between the boards. Great, good. And you also had open issues. 
Yeah, so um, I brought up a couple times in the past, I'm concerned about the keeping, how we keep track of open issues. Um, I feel like sometimes we, we identify something that needs to be solved and it never really rises to the level of priority that needs to be acted on or it gets kind of kicked down the road. And the list of things that have either gone out and addressed or that either they're being addressed and we just don't know kind of what the updates are has, um, I think, gotten pretty pretty large. So I guess what I've, I've, I've brought it up in the past and asked for sort of prioritization meetings or something that and um, haven't really been, um, I guess the concern still just hasn't been addressed in my mind. So what I'd like to propose is sort of a formal system for keeping track of what our open items are, um, how to prioritize those items, working those priorities into uh, a regular plan for our goals for the, um, for the month, for the quarter, for the, uh, for the year, and to revisit that master list of priorities and revisit those prioritizations on a regular basis. Um, so I do have a handout. Um, this is, I'll pass it down. Um, so step one would be to create a master list of open items. I've gone through, this is my list. I didn't want to share my list because I kind of think the group should come up with it, but I've gone through uh, meeting minutes for the last two years and just kind of jotted down quickly things that we have brought up that I think aren't totally resolved yet. Um, all things from um, derelict bi uh, building ordinance to this evening we were talking about Holcomb House uh, pork repairs um, and all sorts of um, items in between. So if we as a board could come together and list out what all of our priorities are, whatever they are, um, prioritize the list. What I've outlined here is a real standard. This is the Eisenhower matrix that you categorize things into important, not important, urgent, or not urgent. If it's important and urgent, that's something that has to get done fairly, you know, quickly. Um, hopefully, most of our items are important but not urgent, and so then we make a plan for when we think we can have those done by whether. It's within the current fiscal year or the current election cycle or um, or beyond. I, I, when I think about that, I think in particular about the uh, clock tower ownership and maintenance issue where <laughs> that's been an issue forever. And at town meeting 2017, we had a big presentation for it um, in front of the in front of the town about things that we wanted to ways we wanted to address that with the masons. And, it's just never risen to the level of, it, to me it always feels like it kind of gets lost in the, uh, in the wash. Urgent, not important would be something to delegate. Um, you know, I'm thinking something like that might be, uh, you know, soccer registration deadlines. We does delegate that or, you know, the tax issue tax issues largely and finance issues are delegated. And the things that are not important and not urgent, we would obviously try and eliminate as much as we can. And that's just sort of one way to prioritize the master list, but however we agree to decide on it, that we assign a priority to each thing, and then create a plan for what we want to get accomplished in the next month, in the next quarter, in the next year, and then on a quarterly basis have a review meeting Look at what's been accomplished. Keep track of those accomplishments. On the back of this page, I tracked a, a lot of things that have gotten done in the last couple of years, which is really satisfying to look at um, and great. What went well? What didn't get accomplished? What didn't go well? Things don't get accomplished because we have an ice jam or we have a dog bite issue that takes, you know, uh, we've got a thousand things could derail us and um, we didn't have the money. Um, so if something didn't get accomplished, then we'd revisit the plan, look back, what, you know, 
readjust expectations on it. Um, and then just repeat that at quarterly intervals, and starting with our March organizational meeting, right after town meeting, June, September, December, it's a great time to do it because that's going right into budget season. So I guess what I'm proposing is that we have sort of a, a meeting, a meeting that we set aside for this and list our priorities, prioritize our priorities, and, and create more of a formal work plan so that we're all on the same page with what we think is going to get done. Um, so it's kind of a formal proposal, but um, Pat, interested in comments. You, uh, I know you use the clock hours like in four instance, yeah. possibly, but I was thinking that that was kind of decided that you weren't really going to go forward until the, the base of the pillars was uh, straightened out. And yeah. once that was uh, set up uh, so that there was a good foundation to work on the uh, tower, that we weren't really going to do much on that until the Masons took care of that issue. That was my understanding of that. So that's why that has not ever been part of our old business for quite a while. I think that's a great, that's a great example because I have a different, I guess I didn't have that same understanding. Right. So like I'm thinking, well, geez, we're gonna get this, we're gonna get to this eventually, and then other people are thinking, no, we're not gonna get to it, but if we meet, and look at the priority and say that's a you know we, we need to get that done this year or no that's something that we've already decided you know we're going to eliminate that then we all are on the same page with what what direction we're moving in i think this is a good idea i i suppose my, my comment would be that i thought that we don't have enough um, meetings where we look forward and then anticipate not only old business, but new business, you know, because this needs to fit the old, you know, we could do some thought about what's coming up in in the year and necessarily that, that might help us with the old business too because we can fit them together. Yeah. But we still have plenty of old business to take care of before we do much new business too. Well, the new business tends to over, to the extent that it's urgent, tends to override the old business and we don't want that to continue. So right. seeing, foreseeing it might be useful to the extent you can. I think this is great too because it'll keep frustration le levels down. I think sometimes we all feel like we've got our priorities and they're not being heard or met and then that can create a certain amount of tension. So I think Brian, you have any thoughts? I think it's a good idea. I think that this, the accountability and the clear communication about what are the board priorities uh, will, will help. All right. You think that's a great idea? Good idea. It's a lot of work, thank you. Yeah. So how do you want to do it? I want to schedule a meeting. I think everybody does a little bit of homework, comes up with what your list is. Let's have a meeting. Throw up a list on the projection on the, on the wall. Let's put everything up there, what we think is on the list, and then go to step two. If, um, you and know. A dedicated meeting. A dedicated meeting. Just this. And not mixing other things to going to sidetrack for the first time we do that yeah. Yeah, I think for the good. first time we can you have a big page for it, don't you I do but you know half of them might be addressed or you know not currently relevant they're just relevant in my head because I <laughs> it might be like you said well we, we have an agreement on that and we don't need to be worried about that but I'm still worried about it because I didn't get the memo somehow Like, for instance, I have salt shed repair on here. I assume the salt shed's already been repaired from the time, but, yeah. but, and you probably even told us that, but I, you know. I don't remember it. But right. it'd be nice to have a list and see yeah. it checked off. See it checked off. I remember, the salt shed was repaired. <laughs> Put that back here. A couple of we did that, so that when, you know, especially yeah, when, that when somebody in the community comes up and says, hey, you know, 
how come you haven't done this thing yet? I could say, well, we have a plan for that, or that's already been done. So anyway, I would suggest that we come up with another meeting date. So sounds like there's consensus uh, among everyone to, to do this. Tracy and have a What's the timeline? How soon? There's a lot of other business going on. Um, it's established that we're down at least two members for yeah. having some type because of this would be a dedicated meeting to just yeah. I would suggest we do it in October. In October? That's good. Okay, time. so we'll look at some October dates. Maybe cool. Now Kippur. Yeah. Uh, the night. October night, that a Monday. It's a Wednesday. A Wednesday. I can't make it. Oh. I can't make it. I can. Oh, okay. Can't. Can't. Cannot. Can you make it at all that week? Um, I can make it Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. Change it. Monday. If you want That's to the first Monday anyway. October 7th? Yeah. Okay. Then why don't we plan on that? Unless it gets derailed by some uh, fire fire or anything that comes in. <laughs> but we'll plan on it. Thank you. Oh, good idea. Very good. Okay. Uh, LCPC. That was Doug. Oh, um, this this is just heads up because uh, um, Ryan and I are the only people here on this um, email somewhere that says LCPC is offering a Assistance to communities interested in improving high-speed internet access, and they have—they uh, are a sub-grant from USDA Rural Business Development from NEVDA, and they have contributions from LEDC and LCPC, and they have a kickoff meeting for uh, to describe the assistance they can provide to for broadband in our community and they would like to hear from us about our local efforts to bring high-speed internet to our community. So I think we ought to request our committee go there, and I think that some of us ought to go there. Uh, and that's uh, September 16th at 6, which is when we set our next meeting. Looks like it's going to be difficult to be there. Uh, yeah, I know that the message has gone to the Broadband, and that they have received it. I don't know what their planned attendance is. But. I would be happy to skip our meeting and go there. Not, the BCA not that I think I. Yeah, well, not that I think I necessarily should, but you know, I think that uh, we ought to be watching the broadband store. Great. If you want to skip out of the BCA meeting, will we have a good showing of justice, JP? Probably not. Of course we will. Yeah. You have to have a majority of some. Yeah. As long as everyone else can make it, we'll be all set. I'll be there. Okay. Go for it, Doug. Have fun. Thank you. Uh, inclusivity sign reimbursement? Yep, so the inclusivity sign has been made. I don't know if everyone has been able to see it. You know, Matt and Doug have had you wear it. I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, so Kate uh, Westcott did it, um, and it's a piece of art for sure. It's like on a scroll, and it has the whole statement written out with some other artistic. Um, tidbits in there and so I'm the original plan was that something temporary would be made and then something more permanent take its place but Kate being the amazing artist that she is kind of <laughs> did a really it's wonderful gorgeous. sign um, that we would like to have be the permanent sign um, and what um, I had hoped for and what I'm requesting tonight is that um, we find some funds in somewhere to um, reimburse for 
supplies to make the sign and a stipend for Kate's efforts. How big a sign is it? It is, oh, I forget the. Four by eight, I would say. At it's least. It's a sheet maybe of plywood. More like nine, sheet of plywood. Nine, eight or nine feet by, yeah. Um, currently, it's up against the bread oven, sort of on the back side of the bread oven. Um, and another thing we need to figure out is sort of where its uh, summer home will be and where maybe it could winter, where folks could see it. Um, and some ideas around that have is been kicked Is it all right to leave outside? Um, I, I haven't heard directly from Kate yet if she's put a protective coating on it, but if she hasn't, then it's going to get one. It's some kind of polyurethane. Um, How much do you need? Well, the supplies were um, around $100 paint it and then the stipend for her, um, I'm not totally sure. I guess I was thinking somewhere between two fifty and three hundred dollars, something like that. You kick in sixty bucks a piece of board and we can pay her. <laughs> the um, it's a real work of art. I suspect that from having watched signs on wood that it's leaving it outside in nine years it will disappear as far as its painting and stuff like that, even if you protect it. Um, it, it it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and it, it is our inclusivity statement. Um, uh, I, I'm, I think someone who knows more than I do should should determine whether or not outside exposure would, would you know, all wood signs I've ever seen just sort of disappear over time. Right. I guess we're thinking leaving it outside just for the summer months on the Legion field, you know, during Tuesday Night Live and the community bakes and when the field's being heavily used. And then in the winter, it potentially living in our, once the foyer is cleaned up and beautified, somewhere in there so when people first walk into our building that's one of the first things to see. that cow. <laughs> the cow will have to move. I trade that every day. The cow doesn't fit through the door. The cow doesn't fit through the door. <laughs> you might need to make it fit through Cut the door. Cut it in half. I got a chainsaw. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you got arrested. But I personally think that would be a great place for it to live for the winter, winter yeah, rainy, winter. rainy months. Really would. Is Kate asking for a stipend? Um, no, she's she's not. Um, but I, um, that was going to be step part two. of the proposal for step two. <laughs> um, so it's absolutely a work of art. It yeah, really, I, really she spent a lot terrific, of you know? time on it for sure. Um, so it would be just a it would just be a kind gesture on our part. I mean, I. I just want to make sure that what we do is not running afoul of anything we've done in the past, but have we ever given stipends for people that volunteered in some fashion? I, that's why I'm struggling to try to think of someone. And I'm thinking of Jen's, Jen's sign that she is doing for the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Is that, how did we, what did we agree on that? That, yeah, so just materials? yeah, it is. That was just materials for her? I think so. Okay, so that everything else was donated. I mean, we, we've often done that, paid for materials and, and costs, but um, associated with whatever project someone's doing, but... That brings it down to 20 bucks a piece for the board then. <laughs> <laughs> but for stipends... Uh, I guess we, I guess my only concern or caution would be it could put us down a road in the future for someone else. But, but I'm, yeah. I, I, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. It's just a caution. Mm -hmm. I think we should figure out some way to compensate her for that, because she really went above and beyond. Um, 
I don't know if it comes from here or how if we pass a hat like Mike is saying, but I, I think it, it's uh, it's really a significant contribution. You say pass a hat at Tuesday night live? Right? Well, no, I, I I don't I don't know where to pass it. I don't know where it comes from. In other words, I don't think we should fund it, but I think it should we should find a way to get money to her for it. You know, I don't think it comes out of the town, but I think it, well, the it could come from the board. We could make a contribution. We're determined to spend our money. <laughs> Just kidding. You spent some money a while back when you I put those flyers out. You remember that? I don't did, you? and I would be happy to do it again. <laughs> if you have to do so, it again. I mean, if you want to be reimbursed for the paint, I would put twenty dollars on the table right now. Well, the and town should definitely be reimbursed for. And the rest of us do the same. No, I think the town should pay for materials. Okay. No, no, right. no question. Yeah, no question there. Well, okay. It's just the question of: Do we start paying people a stipend for doing some? volunteer work in the community. Yeah, I guess you could argue that it was volunteer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been discussed before, but I don't know. I can't think of an example where it actually worked out that way. But I know in discussions we've talked about, you know, oh, we think we'll have to pay somebody to do that. And then it either doesn't you know, maybe it's something we don't do, or maybe it's something that somebody does volunteer to do after all. Uh, yeah, I can't, I you know, as much as I'm confident that we have talked about it before, I'm also pretty confident that we haven't actually paid a stipend out. Okay. You want to make well, a motion? Yeah, so I move that the town reimburse $100 for materials for the inclusivity sign. In a hundred figure? Yes. Okay. Second. Got a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion? If anyone wants to pass the hat later, I will gladly <laughs> get any. Seeing none, all those here. in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And unless I miss something. Somebody else I had one more else? thing um, about just um, speaking of priorities and um, is getting our racial justice workshop on the calendar as soon as possible. We talked about September a few uh, in the June meeting and I just want to make sure that that happens. Um, the, so I don't know if we set if we try to find a date and then you go to Peace and Justice or they tell us what they've got available. I'm not sure what the. Uh, what I've done with them is I gave them a thing saying, kind of in writing, that we want to do the the level one training. I forget what the title of it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackie, do you remember? Disrupting races. It was the one you mentioned. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've always been discussing a conflict resolution training. Is this conflict resolution? No, that was for our town crew guys. Because remember, they were having a lot of inter-office stuff going on. So we talked about them getting conflict resolution, but then for something that we were going to attend and sponsor, that was going to be the Disrupting Racism Racial, racial Justice Workshop. Uh, Tuesday Night Live a couple of weeks ago, I sat with Afi Orthman for two hours and we talked about all kinds of racial issues and everything else. And, you know, he does that. He could easily do a workshop for us. And he said he would be interested in doing a workshop for the town. So I don't know. And I, I was trying to get it out of him for free. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Surprised, <laughs> and I, you know, and I don't. We we never kind of. I guess we were supposed to reach out to him to see if he was, you know, the select board was interested in having him do it. But I, it appears as if he's qualified to do this kind of stuff. He does have a PhD, and so uh, I thought he had a lot of interesting things to say uh, when I was talking to him at length, and I think he would be. Great to, you know, I mean, he is a, a man of color who lived in our town for many years. 
And we even talked about that. Uh, what's the proper words to use today, you know, with, with people. And he said that that was acceptable to him, you know, a person of color, a man of color. So I guess that is the new words that are being used today. And we all had to be cognizant of the words that we have to use today, you know. So I asked him what was acceptable, you know, and so he told me. And so I had a very good discussion with him. And I think he'd, he'd be great uh, to talk to the board about his uh, situations and what he's been through, through his life. And uh, I think it would give us a good understanding. Right, I think what we, um have been discussing is having, you know, conducting a, uh, an educate, you know, an educational workshop for th us in the greater community, um, and it be structured in a way that, you know, is uh, is yes, education being one thing, but it also um, there, you know, the one that I went to with Peace, Peace and Justice. There's a lot of role playing. They have some. Um, videos they show you know it's this is what they do and are very very good at and sometimes emotions get high and they're really trained on how to you know manage manage those in a peaceful way so um, no I'm not trying to stick that, a wrench in the works but I mean it's it's uh, yeah. we read about it on front porch formula day like this is a done deal like this was actually going to happen you know and, and this is that was the first I heard of it actually when I read it on Front Porch Forum. And so I felt as if uh, we had talked about it, but we hadn't, I hadn't heard a thing about it. What group it was going to be, or, or who was going to be coming here. And, and then I read it on Front Porch Forum. I felt like I was kind of blindsided, actually, uh, not knowing exactly what was going on. I don't know if any of the other board members felt that way or not, but I didn't realize that Peace and Justice was coming to town and that the board had supported it and said that they were coming. Uh, so. Well, perhaps you missed the June meeting then because there, and it's stated in the minutes that we definitely discussed this. I mean, Brian and I and Jackie and maybe a little Eric, we've maybe been talking more about the, you know, the, the a few more of the details about it, but the idea has definitely been brought up to this board. Right. Was, many was times. this group in Burlington, you mean, or was it just the general uh, discussion? Yeah. Pass that down, Mike. So this is a handout that Kyle asked me to print. Um, I, I know in our discussions about this, we talked to, or I talked to a couple different organizations and checked them out. This one came recommended from Kyle and from Jackie and uh, some other folks I know uh, had attended the, the same one and they liked it. So it was, you know, we decided on the pretty quickly and I didn't think that there was a lot of, or we, I guess not, and we haven't signed a contract with anybody, but that we were leaning this direction from pretty early on. I guess where I maybe misunderstood is I thought this was going to be a sensitivity training for all protected classes and not just race. I, I guess I never realized it was only going to be a race, racial justice workshop. I thought it was going to be some sensitivity training that, you know, was talking about all protected classes, not just singling out one. But, you know, that, I didn't realize that that's the way we were going. I, I think that that's more a function of uh, they offer quite a few different courses, and I think that's more a function of this is their first course. And then if we wanted to continue this, we could sign up for additional that are not the same, not exactly the same thing, but cover a wider range. I think that the, the focus on this one is just a decision they've made in their programming to focus on a relatively small area 
a relatively small scope to make it fit in one afternoon, one short course. Uh, but if we're interested in something more wide ranging, we can you know select something else. Well, from my experience with the workshop that I went to that was held at the Varnum Library in Jeffersonville, I mean, you know, when we talk about racial justice, it 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 <laughs> it translates into basically everything. You know, I mean, it, we're we're talking, you know, not just about um, African Americans, but we're talking about you know um, anyone from any culture that has historically been you know uh, suppressed and disenfranchised, and so it 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 definitely. I mean, I felt like it, it, you know. Um, Even the Irish? <laughs> I mean, the Irish people, when they got off the boat, they put them no, right I in know. the Civil War, for crying out loud. I know, I you know. You know, they were indentured I mean, servants. That's what I'm saying, Eric, because I think it will, it translates. <laughs> um, okay, maybe it's just the, the naming of it that gives a false impression. I'm not surprised by this. It, it seems to me it's logical based on our conversations. It's sort of where I expect it to end up as far as what program is being presented. Oh, what'd you say? <clears throat> I said I'm not surprised by where we're ending up based on what was discussed earlier uh, or what I understood was being discussed. It, 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 uh, um, I think that in our country we have laws and then we have culture, and we, the laws are there, but the culture hasn't been broken down yet. And we might as well start with us and anybody else that wants to we can bring in for me. Uh, it will help us understand otherness in all other forms. And like the Norwegians weren't always well received either. <coughs> and still aren't in the far west. And you'll see in the minutes, I mean, we, it says racial justice workshop, and then Eric, you said, okay, let's, we should probably do it after the summer. I mean, we, we, this has always been the title. <laughs> this has always been yeah. what we've been discussing. I'm not sure why that did I, guess I just didn't hear it. <laughs> okay. I guess, Miss, I'm very I guess. Like NASA. You said it wasn't there in June. So maybe I don't know. I don't know if you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you maybe missed this I conversation. Maybe I didn't read the minutes. Close enough. I, 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 okay. And we, you know, these are minutes we've approved. I don't know. And I mean, it was, uh, I feel like it's always been in black and white. June 27th. Uh, are, we, okay. are we okay to proceed? I, I've got a. I haven't heard back from them. We haven't settled on a date. I've suggested uh, late September or early October, uh, but I haven't gotten confirmation on anything yet. Uh, we haven't signed anything. This would. Don't you think we're too full late September, early October now? Well, uh, so after tonight, schedules? we're certainly a lot more full uh, than than I thought we were going to. We were talking about this for a weekend, uh, so it's a little different. But you know, if we want to look at different times now, we, we can, but. So how many different um, classes are going to be, you're looking at? You're just the number one you're talking about. Okay. Right. How many hours is that? It, you can go in an, uh, an afternoon or something, you said? Two, I believe. Two hours? Mm -hmm. Well, that's no okay. big deal. We all just find the time and do it. You spend that much time at the post office. Spend that much time at the post office? I don't. Not lately. I've been working in the shop. No, I mean I think this is you know very important, very important. And we've 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 talked about it. We've voted on it. We've you know this is I think I feel like phase two of our commitment to our inclusivity statement. So you're just waiting to hear back from them? Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm trying to look up their. Uh, trying to get to how long the course was, but. Is it going to start like at one or noon or something? You think, Kyle? Or? Uh, I would think it would depend. That was on my plan, but that was, it depends on their availability. Okay. Uh, but the rough plan is, you know, a Saturday. One of the last couple weeks in September uh, was what the board had indicated previously they wanted to schedule this for. So that's what I've been working on. Now this is an open meeting for everybody in the community. Yes. As yes. it was listed. Now where are we going to have it? We. We can't have it here because there's probably going to be possibly more people than we can accommodate up here. We're going to need to get an idea of how many people are attending, uh, but I actually think that we're. How many people are growing up? If we're over capacity for here, my first choice is going to be to talk to Greg Tatro about using the church. Okay. That's a great idea if that space is available. Yeah. I'm um, just for. I'm absolutely booked on September 28th. That is no. So okay. Otherwise, I'm. Okay. Available. Anything um, else? I had a question about uh, one of the items that we received in general mail it was a return letter from Adair O'Neill. Um, she was the bike victim at the dog hearing we had in the spring. Um, I tried to reach out to her, tried to get her a copy of the final decision. I haven't heard back. She didn't live in Johnson, correct? No. Yeah. We got a couple different addresses for her, sent them out. We've published, publicly published this also, uh, so I am thinking that we have done our due diligence to contact her. And that we've sent her letters. Now you can see we're still getting returned mail this late. Um, she hadn't graduated yet, so is she coming back to Northern University? I believe so, uh, but I, we don't have enrollment information or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And they probably can't even provide it. No, no they wouldn't provide it to us. Uh, they wouldn't tell us whether she was attending there or not. No, but you could send a letter up there in care of the college. If she had a mailbox, they put it in it. If you'd like me to, I will. Um, I was comfortable just saying that it, we publicly published it. We've called her and we've sent a couple letters that. I think you've done your due diligence. She gives her address in her complaint. You use that address. Yeah, and we're, we're done. And we called her on the phone to get an alternative address, and we used that one also. Good job. Uh, Close that. Up. So yeah, I'm pretty comfortable saying that we've we've done everything we can to get a hold of her. Did the dog owners ever report back on their training? That's a good question. That's a good question. I'll check with Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. That was a very important. Is that it? Uh, last one uh, that I don't think requires a board decision. Um, we received a letter from VASA uh, just today, uh, so it isn't logged yet, but uh, we received a letter from VASA and the state asking us to sign off on VASA crossing Route 100C uh, up on Hoag and Rocky, where they've been crossing all year. and. Uh, I don't know why we're supposed to sign why off on this. Why would we sign off on a state highway? Yeah. I, I don't know what this is. I thought that was all resolved already. So did I. And then we got a letter today asking for us to sign off on it. Uh, I don't know what we're signing. It's a state road. And I thought we already put this to bed months ago. Yeah. Our response was... Uh, that, that this was a state them. issue. But yeah. It wasn't our problem. Yeah. State's problem. And they were asking whether or not we agreed with them, or have they said they want to allow it? Uh, they, to the best of my knowledge, they've been allowing it. Tell them to see our prior correspondence. What's it? Tell them to see our prior correspondence. Yeah. It's a big story about ATVs and grass uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think there's anything <laughs> that we need to do on this. It doesn't concern us. Okay. Uh, so my plan is to write them back and tell them that 
I don't know what you We told them we had no problem with it either way. But, but yeah, we told them that this was their decision, their road, their decision. Okay, let's have anything else. We'll stand adjourned at 10-10.